Blessed art thou, Jehovah God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In Jehoshua's name, we come before you, O Jehovah, even in these last days, as the children of Israel, Most High, give it testimony that you are righteous, that you are just, that you are merciful, O Most High. And we come here even as the descendants of even our ancestors who were slaughtered in this place, asking and begging for righteous judgment upon Babylon. In 1863, man, we thought that we were Fighting the war, we know what it was to hit the street, so we spread the rumors. We told all our families, we gathered the old folks and the children and hit them leaves. We were walking and running, cause they said that we'll be free. Just go down in this hole, and if you make it, then you will be up north with the free folks. We you chilling, you eat, folks. I didn't know where it was, but somehow I did say some geese. But that's the war with these heathens. We know where it could have been. We know if we made about this whole way it should have been so we took to the streets you know the rumors spread it real fast we told all the hebrews you know we made them happy the mama to grandma everybody in this whole at least the amount that we can get to go and it's twenty thousand. man this hit out of control it's been six months how the hell we get this devil's punch bowl in night almost high and hold themselves not guilty they hold themselves innocent even as they shed the blood of our, of our sons, of our daughters, of our elders, fathers, of the young and of the old, of the weak and of the strong, almost how they have shown no pity, they have shown no mercy. The slaves were released from the plantation no, no, no. and the occupation. They overran matches, and the population went from about democracy said we're free. The Natchez they feel the same. They slaughtered and murdered us. We wish we were still in state. They rather be picking cotton than rotting their life away. Infested with smallpox, corruption would never stop. While working around the clock, they buried you where you drop. You planted us like we crops and hope that we never sprout. But Yah has a final plan. Deliver us from this land. He never intended for us to be destroyed by the hands of man. Kidnapped our soul. The devil punch bowl. Under FEMA's control, FEMA's control. Rex 84. Rex 84. The king got for plain. These crackers are plotting. I hope y'all Hebrews are praying. Begging for mercy. Screaming for grace. Preparing your soul for what you destined to face. 13 elites. The mark of the beast. I'm spiritually grinding. Giving our praises to thee. Most high. Even the blood of the saints who were slaughtered. Even by the whore of Babylon as she becomes drunk. Off of the blood of our people, O oh, Jehovah, have mercy on us. Even gather the remnant of Judah and of Israel together in spirit and in truth. Remove even the divisions, O oh, Most High God, that keep us from coming together. And let us come together in love and forgiveness and unity, Most High, and in faithfulness and in obedience and submission in spirit and in truth. We just pray on behalf of our people, Yisrael, O oh, Most High, that you have caused us to stand in these last days. Give us strength, O oh, Yehovah, for the Ruach HaKodesh of Father, O Yah. Pour out the latter rain, O oh, Most High. Show mercy unto us. Deliver us, O oh, Yehovah. Open the gates of heaven unto our prayer. Yehoshua, receive our prayer. O oh, Yah, receive our prayer. Heavenly Father, let our prayer be as of, of of, of sweet incense before the altar of that throne, oh God. No, no, no. Remember us. Remember the covenant that you made with our forefathers. We repent. Forgive us, oh God. We have transgressed. We have dealt iniquitously. Our, our men and our women and our sons and our daughters, we are all guilty. But we repent with the whole heart. Forgive us, Jehovah. Deliver us, Jehovah. Pardon our transgressions. Salak Banu. Forgive us, oh God. Deliver us from this bondage, oh Yah, from from this evil, from this pain, from this oppression, from 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 no, no, from all this terror, day and night, oh Yah, hear us, oh Yah, deliver us, oh Heavenly no, no, Father, Yah, no, no, no. you will forgive us. We just we pray, just pray on, behalf on behalf of our people, people Yisrael, 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 almost high, high. that you have caused us to stand in these last days. Give us strength, O oh Yahweh, for the rock of oh death upon us, O oh Yah. Pour out the latter rain, O oh Yah. Show mercy unto us. Deliver us, O oh Yahweh. Open the gates of heaven unto our prayer. Yahweh, you will receive our prayer. O oh Yah, receive our prayer.
Shabbat shalom, family. Shabbat shalom. Hallelujah. 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 Hey, can we do this one thing before we get started? Can we give a hand to the Most High Yah and your host of Hamashiach? Hallelujah. 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 Oh, praises, honor, glory, power, victory, esteem unto the Holy One of Israel, Yehoshua Hamashiach. Hallelujah. 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 Man, how y'all feeling today? Feeling good. Lovely. Tell me about y'all week. It was uh, eventful, informative, busy. <laughs> Okay. Mine was very busy as well. Very busy. But a lot of ground has been made. Praise Yah. A lot of ground has been made. Okay, okay. A lot of ground. Um, we're just grateful um, that the Most High has uh, done a mighty work and a mighty uh, deed in, hey. in Israel and even in the body of Yehoshua HaMashiach. If even to the people in the faith who call themselves, um, you know, um, Christians, um, mm -hmm. had a chance to hear the word in a way that was different and unique, and hopefully that was edifying unto them. And we just thank the Most High Yah for an opportunity to share with the people. It's all about Him. It's all about our salvation. You got to turn your camera on, sir. My camera's on. Yeah, it's not something that go out and come back in. Yeah, you're gonna have to fix that. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we're just grateful that he allowed us to be uh, used in the capacity that would help bring understanding. And so we just wish peace and blessings to all the children of Israel and even to the Christians who are seeking to worship in spirit and truth. What do y'all say? Hallelujah. And I want to say uh, thank you to the brothers that allowed you to come on their platform yes. and to actually discuss in detail and, and, and bring clarity and explanation to the things that were being said. Um, everybody knows that's been uh, tracking the news. Everybody knows that is, you know, as they say, been an eventful week, um, you know, coming off the heels of the whole situation with uh, Kanye, you know, mm -hmm. speaking that we are the, you know, true people of the scriptures. Once again, he had a epic interview uh, yesterday, I believe. And, um, you know, I recommend people go and check that one out as well. But is that the one with Chris Morgan? Yeah. Yeah. I got to see that one. Yeah. Yeah. I watched the whole thing. It was excellent. He had some excellent points. I took a few time stamps down just in case. Mm -hmm. But uh, the the highlight of the week would have to be uh, the more uh, brother Yadaya, uh, you know, going out there and uh, slaughtering the beast. You know what I'm saying? Ooh. And uh <laughs> and, 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 then, and, and, and then after that long, long two days of, of work, 48 hours straight, was kind enough to serve up that 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 goat quesadilla last night. Yeah, because yeah, because I know I told somebody I said, "Well, hey, sister, I, I hate to do this to you, but the whole video was originally eight hours long, but the brother came back and um, he 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 literally did. In all seriousness, he gave us the excerpts, like the whole thing unedited, but gave us what was said between both parties, so people can see for themselves. They can look at the information. Okay, this is this is not a game, and. And you have a lot of apologists out there that continue to avoid the conversation on who we are. And so uh, I want to say thank you for that. Um, you know, those of us who, you know, have, say, watched you for years, watch Pastor Dow, watch Elder Ricard, all these different groups. And they've been saying this, but you had an opportunity to take it to that that higher platform and actually deal directly with you know, I'm not going to say the person's name, but deal with one of these alleged, um, you know, apologists that try to keep mm -hmm. our people in spiritual blindness. Mm -hmm. OK, and so it's documented. It's out there for everyone to see so they can go and see for themselves. All right. And so I want to say, you know, thank you for that, uh, because, yeah, that day, brother, you you was working. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of work, 
Praise All God. Praise yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All Hallelujah. praise to the most high God. Dang. Dang. You know, we had to take a little bit of time and just handle that. You know, you know, we've just been working on some things. But you say, you know, most high, should we deal with this real quick? You know, so I just thank y'all. And it happened quickly. Yes. He's asking for a rematch, but you know, um, usually some wants a third round or a third debate or something that usually means that they have to win in one of them you know so after you lose two how are you going to ask for a third you know <laughs> like you know you know ali have to get one frazier have to get one and then maybe there's a part three but you know you know we don't want to you know but this is about people's souls and salvation so it's not like a a, a a a boxing match but it is like a spiritual warfare that we're involved in um, so, you know, if the conditions are right, you know, we'll see about possibly doing a, uh, uh, another, um, debate, but the conditions have to be, you know, the con conditions have to be right. You know, we wanted to edify you know, people. You know, I just want to touch on that real quick. Um, I want people to understand the original subject, um, that, okay. that you had proposed brother was that we talk about who the children of Israel, you know, are. Okay. And for example, if I challenge you to a game of chess and you win, and then I come back the next week and I and we Dominic. play the same game again and you win, and I say, "No, nah, we we were supposed to be playing Pac-Man." Okay. okay? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so for the people that may not have saw the video, may not know, you know, may not understand what I'm trying to say with that with that joke or what have you. Um, the the brother uh Jediah once again said hey this is what we want to talk about the person then said hey i challenge you to a debate on something totally different mm -hmm. and and brother Jediah said well what about this thing that i had already asked you first he said well no i challenged you first well we all know that's not true because right. you can go back and look at the tape from last um you know first day well what some people call sunday okay right so understand people when, you know, when people are trying to play a shell game with you, the question mm -hmm. is very, direct. it's very, it's very simple. Who are the children of Israel? Is This is not a hard, you know, it's very clear cut. Now, if mm -hmm. he wants to ask questions after that, hey, that's him. But mm -hmm. it is what it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. King. It's just been deflection. It's still, that's he's showing, <laughs> proving what you said and what. I said, and what everyone has been saying throughout the course of all of this is that he's just deflecting right? because he still hasn't yet to get to the subject at hand, the subject that, you know, we originally were supposed to talk about. He still has not done that. Now he's deflecting again. Right. And, you know, like we said, people want the truth. They don't want to be lied to anymore. This is the information age. And aside from being an inf information age, these are the last days. We're coming into the last times. And so who want to go into the last times unprepared spiritually? Who wants who wants that as a believer? We want to be prepared spiritually for the return of, of uh, the Messiah. We don't we don't want to be going into those days and times deceived. Mm -hmm. And if Yah requires of us to know his name, we want to know. And if he requires of us to keep the, the Sabbath day holy, we need to know that, too. And if he requires of us, uh, his chosen people, to know who they are, we need to know. You know okay. This doesn't mean that we hate anybody just because we want our heritage, right? Okay. Not at all. But, you know, it's <coughs> like he wants to, they want to allow us to keep being like children who don't have a daddy in the house. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. because when the father's not there, the child's constantly cleaving, you know, or it's a case where there's a stepfather that the child knows that that's not my father. So they want us to cling to that which is not really ours. Mm, somebody, a stepfather that doesn't even love them, love us. Yes. You know, it's different mm -hmm. to be even loved that they don't even love us. You exactly. know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. we're going to give praise to the most high. We're going to say a prayer. And then we're going to get into this study. Today, we're going to talk about why do white Christians burn Hebrew scriptures in black history? Mm. Y'all think that's a good topic to talk about right now? Oh, yes. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Our culture. Most certainly. 
Cain. This is this is another thing that Christians have to ask. Why is it OK for them to burn Hebrew scriptures? Why was it OK for them to burn history? And and what does you know, if the transatlantic slave trade was the biggest slave trade and moving of people, transfer of souls from one continent to the other. You mean the Bible is not going to talk about that? Mm -hmm. is, is, is the Bible will mention everything else except for these things that are happening. Mm -hmm. There's no place for us in the Bible. We just nameless Gentiles. Now, Gentile in Hebrew means Goyim, and Goyim just means nations. Nations. Mm -hmm. So when you say I'm a Gentile, you're saying I'm of the nation. Well, what nation? Everyone, every Gentile has a nation. Mm -hmm. But black people, we don't, we, we Gentiles and we don't have no nation. <laughs> <laughs> no, like you know, we just we just came in like you know from the swamp, you know, and they and they cleaned us off out of swamp water, and then yeah. um and then taught us Christianity and, and then raised us up and fed us, you know, and 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 then Martin Luther King came up out of the swamp, and <laughs> and he was presentable, you know, like that's what that that and then Barack Obama and Rosa Parks, yeah. and here we are, and and white Jesus is gonna come. And and that's it, you know. So we know these things aren't true, and we know that if these if that's what it was, then he couldn't be God. He couldn't be the all knowing, mm -hmm. the all the one who knows all things. He said he knows the end from when? The beginning. The beginning. The from the beginning. From the beginning. So if he knew mm -hmm. the end from the beginning, well, where's all of this part in world history? Why is it not prophesied? He prophesied everything except what would happen to black people. We have no place <laughs> in prophecy. <laughs> We have no place in world history, nothing. We just swamp people. Even he even mentioned the animals. <laughs> he even talk about animals. He talk about creeping things. He even talk about snakes and scorpions. But we decide nothing. Yeah, we don't have anything. We we he talk about fruit, trees. trees. He talk about everything. What'd you say? Trees, trees, <laughs> even fish. Even he talk about fish. He talk about everything but black people. Everything but black people. We the only ones that's not mentioned in the Bible, and that's the only thing that that white Jesus won't forgive is 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 black people asking who are we. <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> oh man, y'all ready for the prayer? Okay. It's okay. <coughs> Told I now Yahweh as if I owe. Thank you, Lord Yahweh. Elohim Abotenu. God of our fathers. God of our fathers. Elohim Ha Ovdin. Elohim of his servants. Ovdin with an iron. Oh, um, mm. the lost. Cain. Mm. Elohim Ovdin Ha uh, Kivisin Yisrael. God of the lost sheep of Israel. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Save us. Save us. Moshe Anu. Oh, our Savior. Cain. Mal Cain. Our King. Go Alenu. And our Redeemer. Our Redeemer. Cain. Ha Elohe Ashir Bara Kolanu. The God which created all of us. Ha Elohe Ashir Noten Haminazeak Al Oivenu. The God that gives us the victory over our enemies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Al Romin. From the highest. Mm -mm. That's oh. very good, but uh, oh, the nation. Romans. Cain. Romain, Romans. Minha Edomin. From the Edomites. Minha Amalekin. And the Amalekites. Ata Ha Elohe. You are the God of. You are the God of. Ashir Misgav. Sagav. The defender. You are the God mm. of Nisagev, the, the defender. You are the defender. Mm. El B'nai Yisrael. Are the sons of Israel. Sons of Cain. Israel. Ata ha Elohe Asher lo Yashin. You are the God which does not sleep. sleep. <laughs> oh, man. Ata mm. El Chayin. You are yeah. life, living. Mm. God of the living. Hallelujah. Mm. Ain Elohe Kamoka. And there's no God like you. Mm. Torah Yehoah. Thank you, Yehovah. He ataka do me o. Because you are great. Rakok al koha Elohim. Far off from the other gods. Far above. Far above mm. the other Elohim. Cain. 
Well, barata ko bashamayim. And you created and you all created the heavens. heavens. Ha malakim. And the angels. Well, ha aret. In the in the in earth. The well, an anashim al ha aret. And the men upon the earth. Well, gam ha yam. And also the sea. Well, ko ha dagim betok hamayim. And all the fish and in the fish. Ata yodea ko devarim. You know all things. Hasof min ha rosh. The end from the beginning. Hallelujah, Torah Yehovah. Torah ki uh uh quats ta bene Yisrael. Thank you, because you have uh is that selected? Awakened. Awakened to the Israel. But ha yamim ha akrim haze ha ele. In these last days. Amen. Salaklanu. Forgive us. Ko katainu. Of all of our sins. Ko aone bene Yisrael. In all the iniquity of the sons of Israel. Well, ko ashir uh, me amanim. And all which would believe. Amen. Rakatsenu badam ha kaves. Wash us in Wash the blood us. of the Lamb. Watain lanu ha begadim kadashim. And give us and give new us. clothes. Begadim Lebanim. White. Cain. Um, M. Um, M. Zoa o Khatat. Uh, uh, without? Mm -hmm. Without spot or blemish. Cain. Hallelujah. Ata ha Elohe ha Tahor. You are the God of. Uh, I need to go Tahor. Tahor, the queen. The queen. Cain. Wa Amarta al al nita al tita ha hamate. And you spoke about. Um, uh, okay, touch not the unclean thing. Oh, okay. Cain, touch not which is unclean. Amen. Bavakusha <clears throat> Yehoah. Please Yehoah. Uh, tif tak aznenu. Open our ears. Wagam levavenu. In our hearts. Al hayom hazeh. On this day. Vatilam denu. And teach us. Dar keka. Of your way. Baruak wa emet. In spirit and in truth. Watashu vlanu. And uh, return us. Uh, le lashonenu. To our language. Lashoni vri. The language of Hebrew. Hadabar emet. The um, word of truth. Wagam ha ruach ha kodesh. And the Holy Spirit. Tiberek ko amka. And bless all your people. Yom yom. Every day. With tirafenu. And uh, heal us. Mikol kolim. From all sicknesses. Mikol mikola. Um, mikola. Mm -hmm, same root. Oh, from all oh, disease. Mm -hmm. Cain. With tibar kainu ba shalom ka. And bless us in your peace. Peace. Well, anaknu not nim laka kol todo. And we give to you all praise. Thank you, Lord, Yehoshua HaMashiach. And also, Yehoshua HaMashiach. For all things. For Hashem, Yehoshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. 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 Shabbat Shalom, family. We are so excited that you all have joined us. We want to thank everyone who has been on the videos, who's commenting. Uh, we are so grateful and appreciative of your support. Um, we, you know, all praise to the most high and we're glad that it's been so edifying um, to everyone, anyone that is with us that are new subscribers, welcome. We pray that the most high will continue your growth and your journey. Yes. Um, we want to remind you you know, if this has, if these things are a blessing to you that you will um, pour into the ministry and support, you have one or three ways you can do that. Um, be a cash app, dollar sign Kayashua, Zell, Kayashua at gmail.com or on our website, www.kayashua.com, select ties and offering and click the yellow donate button. And also after Shabbat, after the sun is down, wherever you are, you want a taste of some of these books that are being used, HebrewIsLifeScriptures.com. If you haven't started your library, let's get that going. If you have started, add whatever is missing. And we just pray that this will continue to be a blessing to you. We just thank each and every one of you. Remember, thumbs up the video. 
um, as my uh, brother Lotus eighteen eleven put uh, put in the comments. Uh, what is it? Don't just come by, eat and leave. Hit a <laughs> thumbs up. <laughs> Dang, I think that's that's dope. Yeah. So I'm gonna, um, turn it over to my sister Lavatia to greet everyone that is here in the chat. Shabbat shalom, everybody. Again, we're excited. We made it to another blessed Shabbat day through a long uh, work-filled week. Praise Yah, giving him all glory, honor, and thanks for what he's doing in our lives and in our um, nation today. So we're excited for the way he's moving. And I want to take time out to say Shabbat shalom to everyone. Shabbat shalom to the Hood family. Yes, the Hood family in the house. Hallelujah. Remain and Lakia. Shabbat Amen. shalom. Shabbat shalom to um, Eliezer and Aliosha. Yes. Shabbat shalom to Maisha White. Shabbat shalom to Akoti Monique, Israel's child. Shabbat shalom to Ahava Walters. Shabbat Shalom to Jason Philip McCauley. He says, Shalom, peace and blessings to everyone in the chat. Praise Yah. Shabbat Shalom to um, Ak Marcus and his wife, um, Akulti Nukia. Shabbat Shalom, Akulti um, Saraftia. She says, Shalom, Mishpaka. Thank you for coming. Um, thumbs up on your way in. Shabbat Shalom to Uzziah. Shabbat Shalom, Akulti Natasha Irizari. Shabbat Shalom to Marvelous. Shabbat Shalom to Ima Samaya. Shabbat Shalom to uh, Marcia Hamilton. Shabbat Shalom, Akulti Z. Shabbat Shalom to Lance White. Shabbat Shalom to Keisha L. Shabbat Shalom, Akoti um, Tanisha Gilbert. Shabbat Shalom to Ya'aqob 12 Yehuda. He says, all praises to the Most High Yehoah and His Son, Yehoshua HaMashiach. Shalom and blessings to Brother Jediah Malek. Shalom and blessings to the chat. Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom to uh, Koti Kiki and Big Brother Irene. Amen. Um, Shabbat Shalom to um, Anyal. Anyale. Shabbat, I'm sorry. Anyale. Uh, yeah, yeah. Anyale. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Shabbat Shalom to Rashad Smith. Brother Rashad. Shabbat Shalom to Anne. Shabbat Amen. Shalom to Kiara Clemens. Shabbat Shalom to Yikwa Emin. Shabbat Shalom to Truth Spoking. And um, Shabbat Shalom to uh, Yas Kingdom. Shabbat Shalom to Ima Bathia. We love hey. you. Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom to um, Dewan uh, Israel. Amen. Shabbat Shalom, Ak Yeshayahu. Okay. Shabbat Shalom to Tashi P. Shabbat Shalom to Noi Noi. Shabbat Shalom to um, Rick S. And Truth Spoken. I think I said you already, but just in case, Shabbat Shalom to you as well. Shabbat Shalom to um, Jamila. Shabbat Shalom to um, Child of the Slaves. Amen. Shalom and welcome. Shabbat shalom to G Money. Shabbat shalom to Asaph Ben Judah. Shabbat shalom to um, Ak the Word. Amen. Brother Leah. Okay. Shabbat shalom to Church Boy 0487. Shabbat shalom. New subscriber. Welcome. He's a new subscriber. Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom yeah. to um, our occulty, our occult, Nicole Marie. Dang. Shabbat shalom. shalom. Lovely. Shabbat shalom to um, Dave Messenger. Shabbat shalom to P Legal Intel. 
Shabbat Shalom to JC. Shabbat Shalom to Maestro Stout. Shabbat Shalom to T Camera. We got a lot of family in the building today. Hey, shalom. Welcome. Welcome, everybody. Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom to JD Israel. Shabbat Shalom to Rick S. Shabbat Shalom to Lance White. Shabbat Shalom to Micaiah. Shabbat Shalom to Lulu. Shabbat Shalom to Yaquob Seed. Shabbat Shalom to uh, C.S. Cranton 369. Shabbat Shalom to Jasmine. Praise Yehoah. Shabbat Shalom to Ak Yoel Ben Yisrael. Shabbat Shalom to Adaya Yisrael. Shabbat Shalom to Curvin Neptune. Shabbat Shalom to Chocolate Night too. Everybody here today. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom to G DJ Love. Um, Shabbat Shalom to Nasi in the land. Mm. Shabbat Shalom to Ahmed in the UK. Mm. Shabbat Shalom to Arthur Jeffries and James Milton at home. Shabbat, sh to Ima, uh, Shabbat Shalom to Ima Kanani and yes. um, Gardelia and Lisa yeah. and the baby. Shabbat yes. Shalom to everybody. We love you guys and we're so excited that you're here with us. Hallelujah. So what we're going to do is we're going to get to this calendar right now. We are today's date. The 22nd. October the 22nd. We are in the, the eighth month, which is called the month of Keshwan, and we're on the eighth day of that month, which is the 22nd of October. Let's see, do we have anything coming up? Looks like we're good for the rest of the month, though feast days or martyrdoms, but earlier in the month we had the martyrdom, we had two martyrdoms this month. We had the martyrdom of Luke, St. Luke was earlier, and then prior to that was the martyrdom of St. Matthew. So this was a very special Hebrew month, the seventh month, but now we're in the, the eighth month, which is Keshwan. Okay. Um, so we want to talk about, uh, again, uh, the topic, why do white Christians um, burn Hebrew scrolls, Hebrew scriptures, and black history? This is a really important topic that we want to talk about today. And um, get your pens in your paper because these things are mentioned in the book. These things were prophesied to happen, knowing the end from the beginning. So what we want to do, um, <clears throat> we um, want to look at a video. We're going to look at a video quickly, and then we're going to see what the word has to say about it. This is a video called Finding the Jewish Tribes of Ethiopia. Finding the Jewish Tribes of Ethiopia. These are the lost Israelites who are in um, the land of Israel right now, but originate from Ethiopia. And they have something so pivotal and powerful that they say in this in this interview. And I want y'all to hear this. This is really important. I get more considering our oh, interesting conversation. Use. Oh, fair use came. Oh, way to go. All right. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comments, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. This uh, playing of any videos is allowable through fair use. Hallelujah. Excellent. All right. Finding the Jewish tribes of Ethiopia. Why is it that all of our brothers and sisters who went to Bible school and seminary school, did you ever learn about the Hebrews in Ethiopia? Did you ever learn about the Ethiopian canon? Did you ever see the Ethiopian art that goes back to B.C. era, 3000 years and that they're black? Or were you only taught Christianity, quote unquote, from from the Europe Eurocentric perspective? And if so, why is that? And if Jesus loves everybody, then why does white Christianity only focus on what the Greeks want us to believe in the Romans? 
So this tradition is the first and oldest tradition of an unbroken society, 3,000 years and counting, 3,000 years plus from the time of King Solomon, which was never colonized by the white man. So we want to talk about this. All right, so let's listen to this interview. We have a brother and a sister who are original Israelites who uh, journeyed to the land of Ethiopia from the land of Israel and then went back um, in these times, okay? Again, we're continuing our interesting conversation about the lost tribes of Israel with anthropologist Dr. Malka Shabtai and Kes Aviu Azaria, the leader of the Jewish Ethiopian community in Israel. Hello, welcome, Baruch. And he look, kind of looked like Tyrone here for a second, right? <laughs> <laughs> In other words, these are our people. These are our people. And see, the media and um, the Eurocentric media, they want us to disassociate ourselves from them mm -hmm. and them from us. And we're going to show you the history of how they separated the minds of the descendants of African-American slaves from our Hebrew ancestry in Africa. We're going to talk about that. And then we're also going to tie in the book burning and the burning of our records and how they did these things from antiquity, from the time of the Greeks, they started doing this, even all the way down through to today. Welcome, Baruch haba. Thank you very much. It is very nice to meet you. Explain the uh, experience of discovering this group of hidden Jews in Ethiopia after living in Israel so long. I knew about the community beforehand. I didn't have the opportunity to go there, but for 20 years, I've been researching the issue. I knew it ever since I was a child. My grandfather heard the story from his grandmother about this area called Kachin. During the time of Haile Selassie, my great-grandfather used to visit them. So much of everything is passed down orally. How many generations, uh, you know, has your family been in Ethiopia, like from the destruction of the temple? We had two phases during the first temple era and during the second temple era. <laughs> It's written in the Bible about Elijah the prophet. Jews went to Egypt through Sudan. Since the Second Temple era, the community spread around. Some said that we are the descendants of the tribe of Dan. It's not True, but ever since the destruction of the first temple, the Jews of Ethiopia kept all the commandments. There's a whole lot in what he just said. First, a lot of European Jews like to label Ethiopian Israelites as the lost tribe of Dan. Why do y'all think that is? This is really important. Why do they like to, you know, like our vocab Malone likes to classify Israelites? Mm -hmm. <laughs> As uh, what does he call them? Moderates and whatever this and this Moderates and that. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Why do they feel the need that they can classify us and tell us who we are? But the white European Jews have told them that no, you're the tribe of Dan. Why do they say that? Because Dan was done away with it. Dan was the one that's not gonna get nothing. He's yeah, he's not even spoken of in Revelations. That's right, Dan was done away with, okay. and his portion was cast out. Mm -hmm. And who's the most notable person in New Testament times from the tribe of Dan? Judas who betrayed Yehoshua? The betrayer, Judas Iscariot, mm -hmm. or Yehuda Ishkariot. He was from the tribe of Dan. So he's the most notable New Testament uh, figure from the tribe of Dan. And in the Old Testament days, you see that the tribe of Dan fell away from the most high from Old Testament times. Mm -hmm. So to insult our people, they say, oh, well, you're the tribe of Dan. You're not really, you're not a real Jew. So this is really, um, this is, again, we're talking about white supremacist ideology within Christianity and Judaism. Um, 
You want to say something? I'm just, you know, like the most obvious first piece. This man does not know English. Right. He is speaking 100% Hebrew. Right. And he looks like us. Absolutely. Wait, so for them to say that he's from the tribe of Dan, then how could they ever be Israelites to begin with? Exactly. They're trying to just they're trying to discredit, yeah, and say, okay, y'all fell away and turned black. Like that's a curse. Yeah, that <laughs> like you know, like, sense at all. Right. <laughs> you know, so you must be Dan because y'all are black and we're we're white. So yeah, Dan <laughs> must have turned black when he fell away. You know. When it's but but if we say that hey Esau turned white, then they get offended. But then they'll tell us, hey, you turned black and you're dead. You, you see the contradiction there? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We got any comments on that? Oh, I'm sorry. I was looking up a scripture. Oh, okay. Well, go ahead. Get your scripture. I thought you were looking at comments or something. Mm -mm. Okay. All right. Uh, what was the second thing he said after that? He said, they incorrectly call us the tribe of Dan, but me and my people have been keeping the laws, statutes, and commandments from the time of Solomon. Mm. Let me play that again. They spread around. Some said that we are the descendants of the tribe of Dan. It's not true, but ever since the destruction of the first temple, the Jews of Ethiopia kept all the commandments. <laughs> is there any European community or society or civilization that can actually prove that they've been keeping the law, statutes, and commandments mm -hmm. that's before the Ethiopian Israelites? Name one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Name one. The oldest Jewish state, quote unquote, is since 1948. We're talking about 70 years ago. And that was because they implanted themselves there or transplanted themselves there before that what jewish community what was what was the hebrew keeping community from antiquity that that look white that is white there are none but when you go to their seminary schools and you go to their churches they will absolutely have you believe this okay this must not be plugged in they'll actually they will absolutely have you believe that the jews from old the are actually white, but you're seeing beyond a shadow of a doubt, the ones that go back to the BC era, they are black and we are the same people to this day. Mm -hmm. and did you find what you was looking for? Yeah, it was just about Dan. Okay. Um, and Genesis 49 mm -hmm. and 17, um, it says, Dan shall be a serpent by the way. An adder in the path that biteth the horse's heels, so that his rider shall fall backward. And as you say, baby, um, who is the way? Mm. Yehoshua is the way. Right. But Dan shall be a serpent unto him. Yehoshua said, "He is the way, the truth, truth, and the life." And the life, right? So when it says about Dan that he shall be a serpent in the way, Jacob was prophesying that Dan would be the one to betray the Messiah. Okay, so let's look at what uh, Ishti Levati have brought up. So we are looking at, again, um, Genesis chapter 49. And which verse? 17. 17. Probably starting at 16. Okay. Okay. Genesis 49, 16. Oh, it's not on screen. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> right here. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. Sorry. I thought the whole time I was on the screen. There we go. <laughs> This is uh, Genesis chapter 49, starting at verse 16. Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Dan shall judge his people. That's really important. That can be positive or negative. Mm -hmm. Most people, when they think, oh, he's going to be a righteous judge of the people, or he could be one who's used 
against his people to judge them or condemn them. So that has a twofold meaning to it. Okay, Dan shall judge his people. Let's look at uh, verse 17. Dan shall be a serpent by the way, an adder in the path that biteth the horse hills so that his rider shall fall backward. I have waited for thy salvation, O Yehoah. That's really cryptic for Jacob to say after that, I have waited for thy salvation, O Yehovah. Again, these are the blessings for each of his children, each, each of his sons. So first he calls his son Dan a, a serpent. Who wants to call their own child a snake? This, is, this isn't really a blessing. This is cryptic. Okay. So Dan shall be a serpent by the way. Again, your host was the way, the truth, and the life. And an adder, an adder is a poisonous snake, okay, that in the path, okay, that biteth the horse's heels. Of course, in Revelation 19, we see that Yehoshua comes back riding a horse so that his rider shall fall backwards. So because Judas betrayed Yehoshua, he fell and died. And then he says, I have waited for thy salvation, O Yehoah. Salvation, what's the word for salvation in Hebrew? Sure. Yeshua. So now Jacob says, I'm waiting for Yeshua. But if you don't know Hebrew language, you would never know that he just said, I'm waiting for Yeshua. If you read it in Greek, it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> so why do they want to burn the Hebrew records? You see, the, you just see from just reading this one verse, the importance of knowing what that says in Hebrew. Because if you read it in any other language, it won't even make sense. It'll have a surface understanding. But when you read Hebrew, you're going to get a depth and a wealth of information to extract out of the scripture that you can't in any other language. But yet the Christians tell us that this Hebrew language is unimportant, especially if you're black. <laughs> okay. And all right. And just and just mm -hmm. to add on, Dan. Uh, for people who may want to follow up and more information on that, um, that's going to be Judges uh, chapter 18. So mm. where it talks about how Dan, the tribe of Dan went into idolatry. Yes. Okay. yes. So, and they never quite came back after that. Okay, so let's go back to um, this Israelite, this black Jew from Ethiopia and Israel has to say. It's really important. Thumbs up if you've been at a file. Let's hit the thumbs up. Let's get them likes up. Share and subscribe. Thank you. It's written in the Bible about Elijah the prophet. Jews went to Egypt through Sudan. Katulano Batanach, Emeo Anevi, Yarnubi Nisraim, Nisraim, the Sudan, and he can so much a Pelata Tanach. The guy translated, all right, he said that in the days of Elijah, right? He said in the days of Jeremiah. So the guy is trans the, the white guy is translated. He's mistranslating him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is another reason why we need to know our language. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they don't talk about in the book of um uh first kings. Uh, uh, I mean, yeah, that's where Elijah is. That's in Jeremiah where the children of Israel do that. About Elijah the prophet. Jews went to Egypt through Sudan. <laughs> What's Navi? Maybe he did. I got to listen to it again. He speaks a little fast. Since the second temple era, the community spread around. Some said that we are the descendants of the tribe of Dan. It's not true. But ever since the destruction of the first temple, the Jews of Ethiopia kept all the commandments. Ethiopia is not an easy country. It's perhaps the most difficult country in the world for Jews. But the Jews continue to practice in every river and every mountain. They kept the Jewish faith and observed Judaism. Judaism. 
Even when they burn their Torah scrolls and their tefillin, they continue to practice in the sacred Gez language. Ooh, burned up their Torah scrolls. Mm. Mm. Who's they? Who's the they? Who's they? The Europeans. Okay. Okay. You see, so, you know, for our Christian community who um, who we uh, have dialogue with, this is why Israelites say what they say. Why would Jesus Christ give his church permission to go in and destroy another community of believers and actually burn the Hebrew scrolls? Would, would God actually, did God indeed, you know, because this is where Christianity comes from, from Rome, right? And the Roman Catholic Church was the ones who were trying to destroy um, Ethiopia historically and root out their heritage. Would God actually ordain the violence and the bloodshed and the burning of Hebrew scrolls, the ancient and, and most uh, perfect set of records of, 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 of his history? Again, Jesus or Yeshua, Yehoshua is king of the Jews. So if he's king of the Jews, would he actually, if he's, if he's king of the Jews, would he actually ordain um, the, the Romans to come in and to destroy his people and to destroy the holy records of the Lord? Did it go up, y'all? Can y'all hear me? Yeah, you're yeah, kind of going in and out, babe. It's just going in and out. Okay. All right. Are we back? Can you hear us? We had interference for a moment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So my question was, would Jesus really ordain or tell believers to go into another group of believers and then burn their burn the holy scriptures? Not at all. Of course not. That would be against his two greatest, one of his two greatest commandments. Which is what? The second one, love your brother. Mm -hmm. Right. So what we have is, is, is we have a situation where the white Christians have came in and killed and murdered the black, quote unquote, Christians. And then not only burn and kill them, but burn their records and try to delete their history. So is it any different when they take pictures of Jesus, who was a black man with Wooly here? Is it any different when they take all of those pictures and then paint everybody, every image of Jesus, Mary, Joseph, Moses, uh, John, Peter, Paul, and all the apostles and all of the prophets, every picture that you look for in, 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 in your churches, and even in social media, on Google and all that, every time you look at their images, they're all white. And that's the same thing. That's like burning the images and destroying them. Will God actually mm -hmm. co-sign that? Or is there a problem with Christianity? It's a problem. It's a problem. It'd be a problem. And actually, um, the scriptures speak to the opposite. It, it, it speaks against doing that. So uh, we see that in uh, Wisdom of Solomon. And we also see uh, an example in uh, Maccabees, 1st Maccabees. So that's what we're about to get to. We're going to show for those who there's many who already know, but there's a lot of Christians who are not familiar with these records. And this is part of the reason why. The Catholic Church and all of the descendants of the Catholic Church, which is Christianity today in America, they call what they want us to believe canon. But they say, OK, you can only believe in 66 books, mm -hmm. even though the Most High had hundreds of books written. You better stay focused here. Don't color outside of the lines, because if you color outside the lines, you're going to actually find out the truth of the biblical history. And I think it's pretty arrogant that they actually would limit the most high like that. Right. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the book of Maccabees, which tells the history of the Greek Empire. And we're going to show you with the European Greek seen the history of God's people is black. This goes back to the days of Solomon. But let's get a few comments before we get to those scriptures. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, 
Oh, um, Yiqua Emmeth posted where in 1958, the president um, Nasir of Egypt said of the Jews, they left her black and came back white. Mm, I truth, remember yeah. seeing that. Areem just texted me that the other day. Dang. Yeah, I remember seeing that. Um, it's really not a lot. Okay. All right. So what we'll do really quickly is um, I'm going to show people. Uh, that's the one. Sorry. I have to find that picture that he sent me. But yeah, he sent me a picture of, of that same um, statement. Okay. Um, so now we're going to go to the scriptures. We're going to go to the word of God. We're going to go to the book of Maccabees. First Maccabees. Okay. Very important book. Chapter three. Okay, this is from the book called the Apocrypha, which um, the churches today, when you go to the white churches, they don't want us reading these things. This is forbidding. <laughs> Again, they the slave masters over our mind. They tell us what to think. They tell us who we are, who we can be, who we can't be, what we can believe. It's all up to them. Mm -hmm. But the Most High said in the last days, He will return the truth unto us, unto His people. So we're going to read and skip around a little bit because this first chapter of Maccabees is very important, but it's very long. So first, um, let's start at the first book of Maccabees. Let's go read the first couple of verses. Then we're going to drop down and then we're going to go to first Maccabees chapter three. As well. Yes, sir. This is the first book of Maccabees starting in chapter one. And it happened after Alexander, son of Philip. The who's Alexander? Who's Alexander, son of Philip? Alexander the Greek. Alexander the Great. That's right. As my father used to say, Alexander the Greek, and as the world says, Alexander the Great. So the Bible actually wrote about Alexander the Great, and it shows you how the Greek Empire wrote, came to power, and the way they came to power was through violence and bloodshed and a lot of um, wickedness. Go ahead. And it happened that Alexander, son of Philip, the Macedonian, who came out of the land of Kittim, had smitten Darwish, king of the Persians and Medes, that he reigned in his stead the first over Yawan. Yawan and is how we say Greece in Hebrew. Yawan, that's how you say Greek, Yawan. And made many wars in one many strongholds and slew the kings of the earth and went through to the ends of the earth and took spoils of many nations insomuch that the earth was quiet before him whereupon he was exalted and his heart was lifted up he became he very proud. okay so now let's tell vocab we want to um oh well that's that's a different place uh, in the book of Daniel, Daniel the prophet prophesied about Alexander the Great. And how does he describe Alexander the Great? As a goat. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll pull up that scripture later. Uh, uh, <laughs> go ahead. Verse 4. And he gathered a mighty strong host and ruled over countries and nations and kings who became tributaries unto him. And after these things, he fell sick and perceived that he should die. Wherefore, he called his servants such as were honorable and had been brought up with him from his youth and parted his kingdom among them while he was yet alive. So um, Alexander the Great is getting ready to die. Um, mm -hmm. It said that he was a boy lover and a heavy drunkard so he probably got had sicknesses and diseases associated with that lifestyle verse 7 so alexandros reigned 12 years and then died and his servants bear rule every one in his place sorry this on the hand so that you can just scroll you don't have to use the button you the wheel you just slide it oh okay mm -hmm. sorry about that i I know words. Verse 8. 
Verse 8, and his servants bear rule, every one in his place. And after his death, they all put crowns upon themselves. So did their sons after them many years. And evils were multiplied in the earth. Okay, that's what I wanted that. Hey, I, that's really important. <laughs> so, and evils. What happened? Multiplied in the earth. And multiplied evils in the were earth. multiplied in the earth. I'm trying to change the screen real quick. Oh, there we go. So when the Greeks came to power, evil were multiplied in the earth. In the earth, just like today. There's nothing new under the sun. So just like today, they started to spread a lot of, you know, uh, antichrist or ungodly behavior upon all the world. So, you know, not everyone was a believer in these days, but when the Greeks started to spread, then like, that's when you had the first abomination of desolation. That's when you had like sacrilegious behaviors really start to increase around the whole world when the Greeks came to power. But when we learn about Greek history in school, they just say, hey, they had beautiful art and they influenced the world. They taught civilization to the world. And quite, it was quite the opposite. They began to rule and conquer the world and get the people sick and 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 and, and steal, uh, you know, just like they did here. They, they, they act like friends and then they give the people blankets, the natives here and get them sick and spoil them. And they, all kinds of like really devious deeds uh, were, were done when they got into power. Okay, so now the Greeks are in power. Um, and <clears throat> go ahead, let's go, let's uh, continue on. Verse 10 And there came out of them a wicked root, Antios, surnamed Hamephor, Epiphanes, son of Antiochus, the king, who had been an hostage at Rome. And he reigned in the hundred and thirty and seventh year of the kingdom of the Greeks. In those days went there out of Israel wicked men who persuaded many, saying, Let us go and make a covenant with the heathen that are round about us. For since we departed from them, we have had much sorrow. Well, then you had so a lot of people, a lot of Israelites began to rise up who forsook mm -hmm. the law, statutes, and commandments. And we have this gentleman. Let me pull up the screen again. Um, is it here? Uh -huh. we, had, we had Israelites who were faithful to the, that throughout all of the diaspora, they held on to and maintained their heritage. The Bible says it's evil for us to know who we are, to know God and the Most High, and to forsake him and become like the heathen. So these are an example of a continuous, uninterrupted um, uh, community or civilization of Israelites. Messianics. Messianic is the true way to say Christian. Messianic. Okay. The white people told us to say Christian, but the Hebraic term is Messianics. They are Messianics. So even to our non-Messianic Israelite brothers, when you go back to the oldest communities of our people on this earth today, they all believed in the Messiah. Okay. So there's really no justification to deny the Messiah because if we want to go to history and even to the community today, they believe in the Messiah. The ones who didn't went to Israel and they started to deny the Messiah once they got around the Israeli Jewish people. Okay. All right. It's perhaps the most difficult country in the world for Jews. But the Jews continue to practice in every river and every mountain. They kept the Jewish faith and observed Judaism. Even when they burn their Torah scrolls and their tefillin, they continue to practice in the sacred Gez language. Okay, so even when they burn their Torah scrolls and their sacred um, things, they continue to be faithful. So in this time in the Maccabees, you had Israelites who were unfaithful. So, so let's see what happened. This is what the Greeks started to do. So we're going to... Um, 
Change the screen. All right. Now the Greeks have ruled. Wicked Israelites decide not to keep the commandments. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go down to verse 29. This is the first book of Maccabees, chapter one, starting at verse number 29. And after two years fully expired, the king sent his chief collector of tribute unto the cities of Yehuda, who came unto Jerusalem with a great multitude. And oh, in the New Testament, you have uh, uh, people who were despised in Israel. They were known as the tax collectors. Y'all familiar with that? Mm -hmm. The New Testament talks about tax collectors. Matthew, the apostle, was a tax collector. They were hated, and this is why we say Israelites didn't speak Greek. Only those who work for the government, like a tax collector. So this is for those on Berean TV who were saying they spoke Greek. The people spoke, the common people spoke Greek. No, they didn't. It was an abomination to them. Um, they refused to learn it because they knew that Hebrew was the first and original language. And then they despised the ways of the heathen. And the ones who learned Greek were the ones who were tax collectors. So they came to collect money, basically, for uh caesar or in this case for antiochus epiphanes and they would uh basically pillage and rob the people's money and if you didn't give them money they would come and wage war against the nation so they would despise and they spoke greek okay so they were a mouthpiece for the for the greek government they were a mouth mouthpiece for antiochus epiphanes and they would say, stop keeping the commandments. And they would say, pay up or Antiochus is going to come here and, and kill and destroy. So they did not like those people. This is why tax collectors were frowned upon in the New Testament. This is the, mm -hmm. this is the origins of these. Okay. Verse 29. And after two years fully expired, the king sent his chief collector of tribute unto the cities of Yehuda, who came unto Jerusalem with a great multitude and spake peaceable words unto them. But all was deceit. For when Isn't that how they did the Native it? Americans? Isn't that how they did the Native Americans? They, hey, we love you. Hey, you know, here's some blankets. Here's some gifts. That's what the Greeks that's did right. to the children of Israel. That's what Christians, that's what vocab does to the children. Hey, I'm because we believe and we're all God's children. But you're really trying to stop the awakening. You you hate the people returning back to the laws of the Most High. Mm -hmm. They Verse spake these words unto them, but it was all to see. You could say it from the top. Verse 30. And spake peaceable words unto them, but all was deceit. For when they had given him credence, he fell suddenly upon the city and smote it very sore and destroyed much people of Israel. So the children of Israel would give the money, but the, the Edomites would kill them anyway. So the Greeks are Edomites, okay? So mm -hmm. they would give them, they would the, the, the Yehudim or the Jews would give money to Greeks and the Greeks would still kill them. Mm. Verse, th verse 31, and when he had taken the spoils of the city, he set it on fire. There we go. Just like... The elder just said, so when they had taken the spoils of the city, what? They said it. Yeah. And when he had taken the spoils of the city, he set it on fire. Set it on fire. So let's hear what he had to say one more time. I just want to show you that this is this in the word. Everything that the elder said is straight scripture. But the Jews continued to practice in every river and every mountain. They kept the Jewish faith and observed Judaism. Even when they burned their Torah scrolls and their tefillin, they continued to practice in the sacred Gez language. They continued their Jewish practice until today. Wow. 
So explain the experience for you being now uh, an Israeli, being able to go back to Ethiopia to help communities that, that I'm sure your family didn't know these communities existed when they were in Ethiopia, to discover more secret Jewish communities, to bring them back into the Israeli people. So now here's what's going on. This is really important to know because like we just said, the, uh, the Edomites would speak peaceably unto them, but it was really all deceit. The same thing happened in 1984. I think it was 1984 when they had the operation called Operation Moses. And what they did was they said that in Israel, the Israeli government said, hey, Ethiopian Jews, well, maybe you are Jews after all. Hey, um, so they got the United States and the European nations to starve Ethiopia, okay, to create famine and drought in the land. And then not, and, and then, you know, how America does, they do, uh, what do they call, where they freeze trading with a nation, um, sanctions, and thanks to starve out a nation. So they did this to Ethiopia to make sure that they didn't really have a lot of food or resources. And then they say, hey, maybe you really are Jewish, Jewish. So they insult them and say, hey, do you guys want to come back home to the land of Israel? And then many of them said, yeah, that's our homeland. So this was all a trick because the Romans from antiquity, the Greeks from antiquity and the Romans could never colonize Ethiopia. And the reason why was because they kept the laws, statutes and commandments in the faith from the time of Solomon consistently. That was their protection, and that's why they could never be colonized, and that's why our people were colonized, because we became like the heathen. So Christianity wants to make sure we stay like them by teaching us not to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. When we stop keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, we have no protection. They had protection because they kept the law, statutes, and commandments. That's the one and only reason that kept them from being colonized. And this is what Christianity emphasizes. Mm -hmm. You can't keep the commandments or Jesus won't save you. <laughs> <laughs> make yeah. that make sense, family. You can do any kind of sin that you want and white Jesus will forgive you unless you keep the law, statutes and commandments. If you keep the law, statutes and commandments, then you're a murderer of Christ. You hate Christ. You hate your whole Hamashiach. If you stop stealing, if you stop telling lies, if you keep the Sabbath holy, if you stop mm -hmm. adultery, if you stop murder, if you have no other Elohim before him, if you stop becoming an idolater, if you honor your father and your mother, if you don't take the name of the Lord, your whole thy God in vain, if you do all of those things, Jesus, not, he not going to want nothing to do with you. Make that make sense. Then really think about that for a second, because that's what Christianity teaches us. But this is the why behind it. Because when we are faithful to the word, then they gain power over us. And that's why it's so offensive to them now when we say, hey, we are the true Jews. And when we say, hey, we're going to keep the law, statutes and commandments. We don't want to keep Christmas anymore. We want to keep the Feast of Dedication, Hanukkah. We don't want to keep Halloween anymore. We want to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. We don't want to keep Easter anymore. We want to keep Passover. We don't want to keep, uh, uh, what is it? Is it around that time? Memorial Day holiday. We want to keep the Feast of um, Pentecost. Yeah, the Feast of Pentecost. Mm -hmm. Shavuot. We want to keep Shavuot. Shavuot, Feast of Weeks. We want to do that instead of Memorial Day. And around every godly holiday or holy day or feast day, what the world does is it has an alternative. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so around those alternatives, around the feast of the true feast of, of, of God, of the most high, then Satan and the world has an alternative feast or holiday to get us to stop keeping the holy days. Mm hmm. Does, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And then through, through doing that, they get power over us. Go ahead, Art. Oh, no, I was just, I was agreeing with you. There's a warning about the alternative feast days and jubilees of the unclean feast days. The, um, you know, whether it be Christmas, Easter, uh, Halloween, all those things. So 
um, these days typically do have a tendency sometimes to appear around our days. Mm -hmm. And it also for people who are hearing this for the first time, it'll give you a better understanding to know that um, the Enoch calendar is the true calendar, because according to the demonic uh, Christian calendar, you know, uh, Yehoshua died in two different months and it alternates depending on which way the wind blows that year. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. right. And anybody can, anybody can Google that. They can say, okay, well, Easter takes place, you know, April 28th this year, but next year we're going to have it in March 26th and, and all these things. So, right. Yeah. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to show you that there was a strong relationship at one time between black Americans here in the United States and Ethiopia and the United States government did everything in their power to separate that relationship. So one by uh, sanctions against Ethiopia, isolating it so that it couldn't, uh, it was hard for them to sustain themselves and then teaching retraining or brainwashing black Americans to dis disassociate yourself from Ethiopia. So now what we're going to do is we're going to show you what happened around the time of World War II, World War II, because even up to as recent as that from antiquity, the Romans, which is Italy, was still trying to break Ethiopia. So you had the last descendant to sit on the throne of the line of David, Haile Selassie, uh, as king were trying to dethrone him. So let's look at what happened and how black Americans were responding at that time. King. Thank you for the super, super chat, brother Yashan Benjamin. We appreciate, hope that this, this study is edifying and that it, it, it can help us grow and understand who we are. Hallelujah. King. Okay, so I'm gonna play this video, okay? Or oh, actually, this is a website well, and video, so let's go to that. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Harlem's forgotten fight to save Africa's last uncolonized nation from Mussolini. Somebody just posted that in the chat. Get out of here. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm on the same page. Okay. Harlem was where the Black Renaissance took place. How many of y'all know about the Black Renaissance? You want to tell them? Um, it was, um, you know, they like to call it kind of like, you know, the Black heyday in, in Harlem for Black people um, where, you know, they had uh, what's the word? The Renaissance is like a renewal. So, you know, you had, they had businesses and homes and, you know, they were living well and had their own community and it was, it was strong and it was beautiful. And, you know, they had restaurants and they had the banks and they had whatever that was needed. It was all there. And it was a special time in Harlem. Amen. What drove the black Renaissance? Well, one of the things was, um, and it, like we, when we had our own communities, um, we were doing business with each other. Um, we didn't really need the outside, um, you know, for lack of a better term, we didn't need the outside nations to come in and help stimulate our economy. And so through our own creativity and, you know, invention and business acumen, we started, you know, being able to uh, develop and, you know, sustain That's our own. That's actually the side effect of the root. Okay. What started the Black Renaissance in Harlem was Black people start waking up knowing they were Israelites. That's why a lot of the truth movement started and originated in New York. Mm -hmm. mm. Black people in New York had a mass awakening that we were the children of the Most High. But the history book's not going to tell you that. This was the driving force of the Black Renaissance in the early 1900s. Black people started to understand who they who they were. Y'all ever heard of Abyssinian churches or 
the church of I've heard of it, but yeah. I don't know what it is. No, I've heard of it though. Like in a lot of black communities, you have the Church of God, the Abyssinian Church of God, or I heard that name, but I didn't know what it meant. Yeah, I know the Church of God, but not Abyssinian. <clears throat> How many of y'all in the chat ever heard of uh, Abyssinian churches? A church is named Abyssinian. Anybody in the chat? It's a little delay, so it's okay. okay. It's a little bit of a delay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well. Abyssinian is the Greek way to say Ethiopia. Oh. So there was a great awakening of our people, and they began to understand that our heritage as Israelites goes the, the last remnant and uncolonized remnant of our people were in Ethiopia. And this is what Marcus Garvey was talking about when saying we need to be focused on our own economy, economics, and so forth and so on. Marcus Garvey was telling the people that our roots is to go back to Africa, to Ethiopia. And this was the driving force behind the black Renaissance in Harlem. And weren't some of your elders um, from when you were growing up? Yes. They had some connections with Ethiopia yes, as well? Yes, absolutely. Rabbi Matthews, Rabbi Ford, those were the, the founders of the Israelite community in New York. Um, from the days of Harlem and they come out of that movement and they had connections to Ethiopia. They, Rabbi Ford went and moved back to Ethiopia uh, because the United States government was persecuting. Okay. okay. So let's, uh, let's read this. Harlem's forgotten fight to save Africa's last uncolonized nation from Mussolini. Okay. You see that Ethiopian regist volunteers register here. So this is during World War II and black people in Harlem and around the United States signed up in massive numbers to join, to volunteer, to volunteer for World War II, not to defend America, but to defend Ethiopia from Italy and from Mussolini. So they joined the military in droves by the tens of thousands, maybe more, to stop Italy from its war against Ethiopia. So the United States government had a trick for them, obviously. And they made it so if anyone fought for Ethiopia, you would be an outcast from America, you would, you would be arrested, you would be in prison. It would be a form of treason if you fought and defended Ethiopia. And it was from that time period that the United States government made sure that they drove a wedge between us here in the United States and our people in Ethiopia. So let's read. <clears throat> it says, Harlem, New York, the summer of 1935, years before the United States or even allied Europe has entered World War II, large crowds of African-Americans are gathering around a registration desk volunteering to take on a fascist Italian dictator who is soon to become Hitler's fiercest collaborator. Okay, fascist yeah. Italian means Roman. Mm -hmm. Okay, these are the same Romans that burned Jerusalem. They're trying to burn New Jerusalem in Ethiopia. Ethiopia's churches, their, their holy sites is known as New Jerusalem. So they wanted to go in and burn and destroy the holy sites and the holy priesthood in Ethiopia. Rome never stopped. It just became known as Italy and the Catholic Church. They were still on a mission to destroy Israelites and burn our records. And did mm. somebody say that they were part Sicilian, which are the Italians? And so that means that this is the yes, history this is, of their people. Yes, this is Vocab Malone's history. Mm -hmm. I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> yeah. This is Vocab Malone's history. He he doesn't have a history of oppression on people. This is Vocab Malone's ancestors and what they did to our people. He's just a modern age example of that. Okay. He's a modern age. And white Christianity is some more modern age. But Vocab from this, this area, this is what Vocab's ancestors did to our people. So he's offended that these truths are coming out. Yeah. No doubt Black Americans have enough battles of their own to fight every day on American soil in the midst of the Great Depression and an enduring Jim Crow era. But news has just come from Africa. 
the continent's only remaining nation to avoid colonization in Europe's scramble for Africa has just been invaded by Benito Mussolini. And more than 7,000 miles away in a historic display of Pan-Africanism and black nationalism that took See, place- of Today, when you think Pan-Africanism and black nationalism, you think about Egypt. You got a lot of atheist black people saying, hey, we're going back to Egypt. Let's put this onk on mm -hmm. and, and let's worship the, the demon gods of Egypt. But that's not what Pan-Africanism was. And that's not the movement. They usurped and co-opted the Israelite awakening and then steered it into Egypt. It had nothing to do with that. It had to do with our people in Ethiopia. This is fact. Mm -hmm. And more than 7,000 miles away in a historic display of Pan-Africanism and Black nationalism that took place across the United States, this was the Black American community drafting itself to defend the empire of Ethiopia when no one else would. We Today, drafted ourselves mm. to go fight and defend Ethiopia here in the U.S., but if you listen to these white people, they'll tell you we have no connection. We have no relation. Go ahead. And, and to be honest, brother, I never knew this piece of history right here. So this is this is really good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Continuing on, today's forgotten chapter of history connects to a number of fascinating stories about America's first black aviators taking us from the streets of Harlem to Africa with an unexpected stop in the English court countryside following the little known footsteps of the last emperor of Ethiopia, who just so happens to be regarded as the incarnation of God by the Rastafarian religion. Get ready for more fascinating black history they never taught us in history class. Right, wow. so let's watch this video. Fair use. Fair use. Copyright disclaimer under section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976, allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, commenting, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a permitted is permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. This is allowed under fair use. Amen. Hallelujah. So now we're going to see black people in America volunteer to fight alongside. Why didn't they tell us this in history class? Did you, did you learn that in history, son? No. What do you learn about black history in school? Uh, or do you even learn black history in school? I don't. What history are you learning about in school? Just different governments like Roman governments, um, American government, stuff like that. Judicial branch, this stuff. Mm -hmm. This is this is what they. This is why they want us ignorant. And if they control what we learn in churches, then they can absolutely control what our children learn in school. The church is the root of our spirituality. Okay. Can I can I ask Brother uh, Yadaya Yeshua a question? Mm -hmm. um, uh, school, like currently in school, like back in back in my day, they used to have it where uh, Black history started from. Uh, Christopher Columbus, do they still do that or do they not even teach that anymore? No, not so much now. Like Christopher Columbus, we don't even talk about that, but they do talk about MLK, but that's it. <laughs> <laughs> and like Rosa Parks, but that's as far back as they go. Okay. Sometimes they do talk about um, what Nelson Mandela and mm -hmm. like the, uh, what they call it? Apartheid. Yeah, apartheid mm -hmm. in um, Africa, but that's it. So they don't talk about slave, slavery, anything like that anymore? No. Mm -hmm. They okay. call that critical race theory now, mm -hmm. so they don't even teach about it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Because it will hold white people accountable for what happened in history, and they don't want to be reminded. So they've looped it under critical race theory. So to teach that history is to unfairly target them is the theory behind it. All right. Rear clips as African Americans volunteer to fight alongside fellow Ethiopians against fascist Rome invasion of Ethiopia. So when you see Mussolini, this is just Rome trying to destroy Jerusalem. 
all over again. The last remnant of Jerusalem that they could not destroy, they still tried to destroy it. But since they couldn't destroy it, they said, if we can't beat them, we'll try to draw the people out. So what they tried to do was draw the Israelites out of Ethiopia and then say, hey, here, come back to the promised land. Come back to the Holy Land. And then many uh, Ethiopian Israelites were deceived by that, just like we read how the Greeks spoke peaceably to them, but it was a sham. So what happened is that in 1984, during Operation Moses, I think it was, the Israeli government in cahoots with the United States government said, just lure them out of the land. Since we can't go in, we have to lure them out. And then when we lure them out, then we can brainwash them and get them to forsake their heritage. And once the the, the Ethiopian America Hebrews got to the land of Israel, they instituted the same Jim Crow laws and the same program that they do to our people here. The same thing, it's the same playbook over there in Israel. And Israel has some of the worst ra racism in the world. So the, the Jewish people are probably the most racist government on planet earth. They're like the old South on steroids. Yes. Okay. Fair use. They all willing to put their life on the line to defend Ethiopia. <clears throat> Women too. Look at our sisters stood stood up. Look at them. So this is during the time of the Harlem Renaissance. The Renaissance was, we are Israelites. Mm. Ready, sir. What is your weight? 150 pounds. Height. Uh, five foot, uh, three. Okay. Go ahead, Op. The rare footage above provides a glimpse into the summer of 1935 when some 20,000 protesters in New York and thousands others in Boston, Chicago, and Detroit took part in a vigorous campaign to support the Ethiopian plight prior to World War II. Africa's last sovereign nation was for them a symbol of redemption in the diaspora. Hope for a future of racial equality without being subjects of white colonial ventures. And this is when the United States government knew we got to separate the, the relationship between blacks, descendants of uh, slavery here mm -hmm. in, the U, in the U.S. from Ethiopian Israelites. Mm -hmm. And they came up with campaigns to disassociate us from them. I remember in school, like when people would... Um, um, do the dozen sometimes they would call each other oh you're an ethiopian this or ethiopian that this was programming like you're uh, you, you, your your family's so hungry y'all like ethiopians uh, you know they would say disparaging things against ethiopia and haiti because these were the two nations that resisted colonization and so brainwashing black youth in in new york in those days a lot of times they would say bad things about black people from these areas, but that was because they were being programmed. Hmm. That's Mussolini. It, rem it reminds me of what you said uh, a couple of days ago, that that powerful statement you made about uh, Moshe uh, marrying an Ethiopian, meaning uh, the law uh, being grounded, mm -hmm. uh, the law of the Torah being grounded in Ethiopia. So, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. If you, you know, um, but let's, let's, let's talk about that really quickly. Um, Okay, so in the in the Old Testament, in the first five books of Moses, you have the story where Moses in Exodus he marries the Ethiopian woman, and in Numbers, 
Certain Israelites were upset about that, including his brother Aaron and his sister Miriam. Miriam was hit with leprosy mm -hmm. for speaking about Moses' Ethiopian wife. And then later on, during the time of King Solomon, King Solomon married Queen of Sheba, who was an Ethiopian queen. So what that is, is a picture of the high priesthood and the king, the order of Melchizedek, having roots or hidden roots in Ethiopia. So you have Moses, who was the anointer of the priests. His brother Aaron, you know, the high priest came from that lineage, but Moses anointed him. So Moses was greater than Aaron, but Aaron's descendants became the priests. So what happened to Moses' descendants? They were, quote unquote, Ethiopian Hebrews. And they became hidden. Do you hear about Moses' descendants? Mm -mm. They became hidden. They're Ethiopian Israelites. Mm. Is that why it's called Project Moses? Excellent point. That's probably why it was called Project Moses. That's a really great connection. And the second was Operation, Operation Solomon. Solomon. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Wow. That's right. Mm -hmm. Excellent, Bane. Yeah. Excellent. The second one was Operation Solomon. I think a couple of the Operation Moses, the Israeli government said, hey, this is working. We're, we're, we're whitewashing them. We're disassociating them from their heritage. They're denying Yehoshua as savior. They're becoming secular and worldly. They're not spiritual anymore. So that's what started to happen. And they started to get oppressed by the police, all kinds of stuff. They make sure that you have to join the Israeli military. Mm -hmm. And then you get brainwashed into these things. Um, and they forget their own culture and their own language and their own culture. And then worship starting with the Jewish worship. This is what the Israeli government and the United States government did in working in ten good cop, bad cop against Ethiopian Israelites. So Solomon marries Queen of Sheba. He's from the royal line. Moses is from the holy line, the priesthood line. Solomon's from the royal line. So you have the king and priests having hidden descendants in Ethiopia, Ethiopian Israelites. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got any comments yet? We had a really good one. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Mm, where is it at? Well, I did send it to you. I guess I could go there, but I'll have to come out. Where is it at? Okay, I think I found it. Let me just go to y'all. All right. Um, P Legal Intel said, I grew up in a house with an Ethiopian Bible that had 92 books. Mm. My aunt has it now. The mm. pictures were of all Black people in the Bible. Man, wow. that's why the Hebrew Israelite scriptures, gold edition, silver edition, the lost books of the holy apostles, lost act. That's why these books are so important because you're not going to find these things. Hmm. We have to we have to be the curators of our own history, because if not, the heathen will whitewash it or burn it. If we don't protect it and stand up for it, then they'll burn it. So us as Israelites, we need to move away from the Sefer. The hallelujah scriptures, these things are a stumbling block to our return, believe it or not. Um, <clears throat> people are really just talking back and forth to one another, so it's not really okay. a lot that they're okay. adding to. That's it. Okay. Okay, so let's let's continue on reading. In the space of about 30 years, between 1881 and 1914, roughly 90% of Africa had been colonized by European nations, but Ethiopia was one of less than a dozen countries left on the world map that had managed to escape foreign control and white supremacist ideology. Mm -hmm. In a new wave of imperialism, this landlocked country in the Horn of Africa has successfully resisted invasion, invasions from the British and the Italians once before, who wow. retreated with tails between their legs 
during the first Italo-Ethiopian War of 1896. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Continuing, but Mussolini had come back for revenge in August of 1935, this time with a stronger military offense to establish a modern Roman Empire in Ethiopia. Why do they want a Roman Empire in Ethiopia so bad? Because mm -hmm. the Catholic Church is there and they want to erase and burn our history. They want to burn the white Christians, quote unquote, want to stamp out and kill any evidence that Hebrews, Jesus, Yehoshua, the apostles, the prophets mm -hmm. are black. That's right. As long as Ethiopia, as long as Ethiopia stood and stands, then they can never fully claim dominance over our history. There's always a lamp that is lit for the house of David. They try to extinguish the lamp of the seed of David. And Yehoshua Hamashiach, they put, they tried to put that that light out, but they mm -hmm. couldn't. But Mussolini had come back for revenge in August of 1935. This time with a stronger military offense to establish a modern Roman Empire in Ethiopia, sending its reigning Black Emperor Haile Selassie into exile. Haile Selassie. Let's look up something really quickly. So now, what I want to do. Let me pull this up. <clears throat> Let me show y'all Haley Selassie in Hebrew, okay? So that y'all know the Hebrews of this heritage. Okay, we're gonna go to H2428. This is why knowing our language is important. See, so now I can show you Haley Selassie and what it means Hebraically. Chayil. Chayil, which they'll say Haley. Some, most times, uh, Chet, this letter is called Chet. They'll usually, uh, in English, sound it or write a H to it. Chayil. What's that mean, Aki? From H2342, probably a force, whether of men, means, or other uh, means of other resources, an army, wealth, virtue, valor, strength, able activity, army, band of, so, of men, soldiers, company, great Forces, goods, host, might, power, riches, strength, strong, substance, train, valiant, valor, virtuous, war, worthy. Okay, Kayil or Haley, all right? This is where that comes from. And Selassie. Hebrew word, strong. I want y'all to write this down and hit thumbs up, y'all. Hit thumbs up. Write this information down. This is important for our heritage and our history. Okay, Selassie, H7992. Shili Shi. Shili Shi. Shili Shi. Ordinal from H7969. 7969 is three. Shalosh. Three. Triad. Mm -hmm. So the power or the might of the Holy Spirit, I mean of Godhead. That's what Haile Selassie means. Chayil Shilishi. The power of the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Ruach HaKodesh. Go ahead. Ordinal from H7969, third. Feminine, a third, by extension, a third day, year, or time, specifically. A third story cell, third part rank time, three years old. Chayil Shili Shi. Chayil Shili Shi. All right, Haley Selassie. 
the power or the might of the Godhead. They tried to stamp this out, <clears throat> but Yah would not allow them to. So instead, what they did was they drew our people out. Okay, go ahead. So we were talking about Chayil Shilishi, the power of the of the Godhead. Uh, starting, I start at the beginning. But Mussolini had come back for revenge in August of 1935. This time with a stronger military offense to establish a modern Roman Empire in Ethiopia, sending its reigning Black Emperor Halil Salashi into exile. News of the brutal invasion outraged African Americans, many of whom increasingly saw Ethiopia, an ancient cradle of civilization, as their true ancestral homeland. What? This is the Black mm -hmm. Renaissance. These are the things that was driving the driving force behind it. If there was ever a foreign war worth fighting, it was going to be this one. Not Ukraine? But you know what I mean? We should be fighting for Ukraine <laughs> or for Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. <laughs> but for the thousands who signed up for the draft, including women, if that rare footage is anything to go by, their efforts would ultimately be in vain. Why? Because the United States duped them. They speak peaceably and then did wickedly. So here's a picture again. Ethiopian volunteers register here. These are black Americans mm -hmm. in the major cities across the United States. Mm -hmm. And what happened? Almost all volunteers were blocked from leaving by the U.S. government. Which That's what they did. So the U.S. government made it hard for black people in America to even go to Ethiopia and disassociate the relationship between us here and Israelites in Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. They sabotaged it. This is powerful. Um, like I said, I never even before, you know, I'm old. So back in the day, we didn't have this like, you know, before the all critical race theory stuff. I still never heard of this in school. So this is kind of eye opening, uh, you know, this this particular uh, thing here that, you know, the Ethiopian draft. I just had never, you know, wasn't aware of it. OK, Ima Bethia put a comment. So let's read this comment really quickly. Mm -hmm. She said. So the Zondervan Bible calls the Ethiopians Hamites. I guess that's wrong. Now that's right. Ethiopia by itself was from the descendants of Ham. But mm -hmm. just like we're called Americans today, we're in a strange land. It's the same thing with the Israelites who were in Ethiopia. Mm hmm. Ethiopian was a strange land for them, but they're Israelites. So they're really Israelites in Ethiopia, not that they're from the line of Cush. Just like we're not from the land of Babylon. We are Israelites in captivity or wanderers here. So one of the words that they call Ethiopian Hebrews were that the that the Cushite, the Hamite Ethiopian, the Hamite Ethiopians, the descendants from Cush, they call the Israelites there Falasha. And Falasha means wanderers, the people without a land. So that's where the term Falasha Israelites come from. That means Ethiopian Hebrews. And they're called Falasha because they're wandering in Ethiopia. But they're not from Ham. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Almost all volunteers were blocked from leaving by the U.S. government, which threatened imprisonment if they chose to bear arms alongside Ethiopians and adopt their military uniform. So they made you uh, a prisoner and disassociated and cut off all association between blacks here in the United States and Israelites in Ethiopia. Mm. But it was the seed had already been planted. The awakening began to happen. We know we're Israelites. That already started to happen, but they cut off all communication from that point. According to a federal statute, it was a criminal offense for an American citizen to support any country 
was not an ally of the United States. Harlem Renaissance leader and civil rights activist W.E.B. Du Bois argued at the time that Western powers would have responded to the invasion of Ethiopia if Ethiopia were a white nation. E. W. E. B. Du Bois was considered to be, what's the proper term? Activist. We don't want to say raccoon. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, sellout? Sell kind of like a sellout. And even he was standing up for mm -hmm. Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. Even he recognized Ethiopia. And he wasn't black friendly, so to speak. Mm. Demonstrators faced hostile pushback from the police while tensions mounted between the black community and some 100,000 Italians that originally called Harlem their little Italy until the 1950s. Despite desperate appeals, lawmakers and the State Department successfully prevented all African-Americans from traveling to fight under the Ethiopian flag. That is, except for a few brave individuals who slipped under the radar. So there were wow. some who was able to get out anyway, and they were willing to put their lives on the line to uh, defend Ethiopia. So now uh, what we're going to do is I'm just gonna type um, here, I'm gonna type racism racism in Israel because OCAP said Israelites are anti-Semitic but let's see the fake Jewish people be anti-Semitic and hate black Hebrews who really hates who hmm, that's the first one why Ethiopian Jews read Israelites are building a movement against racism in Israel Israel's new racism, the persecution of African migrants in the Holy Land. Anti-black racism reveals Israel's white supremacy. Look at all this. But we're anti-Semitic. <laughs> How police killings force Israel to confront anti-blackness. So the same playbook that they do to our people here, the Israeli government did to the Ethiopian Israelites once they got to Israel. Before that, when they were in their own homeland, they didn't know none of this stuff. Why do Ethiopians face racism in Israel? I mean, so many. Fair use, copyright disclaimer, under section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976, allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, commenting, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use <coughs> permitted by copyright st statute that might otherwise be infringing. This is allowed under fair use. I'll play some of this because this is shorter. This is four minutes long. RJ McKenzie said, click the first video. We'll try to do that one, but that one was a lot longer. So this is why I'm clicking on the shorter one, but we'll go to that one. <laughs> now joined here in studio by Mazal Bissauer, the spokesperson of the Association of Ethiopian Jews and in Jerusalem, Dr. Doron Schultzner, the head of politics and communication at Hadassah College. Thank you both for joining us today. Mazal. Same playbook. What do y'all see? They're using us. They got her going up there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It makes sure that there's basically uh we should be united, the men and the woman. Mm -hmm. But they make sure that there's a woman by herself who's uncovered to represent the people and they put her against a white man. Two white men, really. This is what they do on American news, the same playbook. Watch the play. So we should be united as man and woman, you know, but they have the sister out there to contend with two white guys. I want to start with you. Tell us about the kind of discrimination that Ethiopians uh, face here in Israel, because this isn't just about Solomon Tekka, is it? It's, it's, more, it's a lot worse. Of course not. Solomon Tekka, unfortunately, is our latest trigger for the protest. Um, it's a very difficult question to ask because 
if you look at it very well, then you can see that the discrimination and racism, um, you can find it at almost every aspect of life. But she's telling the truth. Hallelujah. She's telling the truth to power. Hallelujah. But this, they didn't know anything about this before they came to Israel. When they was in Ethiopia, they didn't have none of these issues. But they were seeking after the world. Or and it was see, deceived by the world. And this is why we can't deceive by the world. Then you lose your power. Now they're under subjection when the European could never subject them. Um, you can find it at almost every aspect of life. Mm -hmm. If you go to, if you uh, look at segregations of schools, uh, schools that won't admit uh, young Ethiopian kids, you go to the uh, academics, you go... <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, uh, you go to the government, you see there are not enough. This might be a touchy subject. <clears throat> this might be a really touchy subject. But please don't get me wrong. But a lot of the curses of Deuteronomy 28, they had to deal with some of them, but not nearly to the level that we have had to until they start to integrate. And even the sisters, the Ethiopian Israelites who are our people, their hair grows the way our hair used to. And that has direct relevance to the obedience to the laws, statutes, and commandments. So in Ethiopia, I will people there had long hair. But now through the generations, the longer they're there under captivity, you start to see more and more of the Ethiopian sisters wear weaves, but they had absolutely no need for them. Their hair already was down their back, down to their butt or longer, with woolly hair just like ours. This is how all of our hair grew before our ancestors forsook the, the law, statutes, and commandments. This is how powerful obedience to the law, statutes, and commandments are. And this is why the white man and Christianity make sure that they nail and drive into our heads, forsake the law, statutes, and commandments. It is the strength of us as men. It is the beauty of us as, as women. We're still strong and beautiful anyway, but that's the root of our strength and our beauty. Men need to be strong. Women need to be beautiful in the spirit or the soul or the body, okay? These are the things that make a man a man, whether he's mentally or intellectually strong or physically strong or uh, what else did I say, spiritually strong. And the same thing with our sisters, that they're spiritually beautiful or physically beautiful or mentally beautiful. These are the things that make us uh, who we are. And so they confuse gender roles and now they have the men wanting to be beautiful and they have the women want to be strong. See? So these things can sometimes be a little bit touchy, but it's not to shame any gender, male or female, female or male. I'm just showing you the games that the adversary plays over us. Okay? How do y'all feel about these things? Y'all have any insight on that? Just really glad you brought that out. It's really important. Just in how, like, the mentality we should have, like, because, I mean, everybody's different, and, I mean, y'all created, um, like, men to be a certain way and females to be a certain way, and it benefits us all. But Babylon is just confusion. Mm -hmm. And so the largest, I uh, think, homosexual population is in Israel. <clears throat> and so in Tel Aviv and in Israel, and so now the Ethiopian Israelites that go there, now they get exposed to this lifestyle, which was totally and completely foreign. In our, in our homeland, okay. Yeah, you did say yeah, what you. I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say I agree exactly with what you said. We have to understand that, you know, a lot of people may not like this, but uh, Christianity is is more of an <coughs> style religion. Um, if you want to put this to the test, go you know go online, go into some of the chats, like live chats or what have you, and they'll be discussing scripture. They'll be discussing. Bible. You read scripture, if you just straight out read scripture in a normal tone of voice, like in a man voice, 
they will say, oh, you're being aggressive or something, something mm -hmm. to that effect. Just by simply like the same reading that we do here each week, they'll say, oh, no, that's, you know, you know, what I'm saying that's out of order. And it's usually women, you know, speaking up and leading the men in, in those, uh, you know, Christian congregations. All right. So okay. understanding that when we when we switch things and put things out of order, when things are out of order, we start to lose order in our communities. Right. And that's why it's important that we, you know, cleave to the laws and the statutes and the commandments of the most high. All right. Because that is our strength. That is our protection. Um, that is that is our crown. Okay? Amen. I think it's first Corinthians 11. It says in Yehoshua or Messiah, neither is the man without the woman, nor the woman without the man. The man may be the head, but the woman is the heart. Can any of us live without our heart? <laughs> no. Can any of us live without our head? So the brain needs the heart and the heart needs the brain. That's right. OK, we need each other. There's no life without one of us not there. OK, so the gender warfare and the battle of the sexes, this was this is this is a playbook from the adversary against God's people. That's right. OK. Uh, uh, yes, yeah. not Afro representation, and of course, the police brutality, which yeah. is to us, is the most it's 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 the most urgent mm -hmm. because our life are at stake. I wanna, yeah, I wanna All right, know. so now this is another playbook. This is really important. Now, because of this racism, right, that they're facing. What do you think their response is to it? Protest. Black Lives Matter. Protest. And they have a movement similar to Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. And they start protesting. And the powers that be teach them that the way to fight this is through protest. No justice, no peace. <laughs> and all of that marching. So now the ancient way is to cry out unto Yah. The ancient way is to fast and to pray. The That's ancient right. way is to cry out unto the Lord, unto the Most High, unto God. And so now they shift from dealing with these things spiritually to then dealing with them in a worldly sense, where now we're pleading to the enemies instead of pleading to the Most High, and then you never get anywhere. And so now that shift has happened to the Hebrews in, in, in Israel, the Ethiopian Israelites that are now moved to Israel. Now many of them are deceived and now they're taught to handle things the way uh, we do here, which is to march and protest. And that's not it. The power that they had that kept them set apart and unconquerable now is diminished because now they say, oh, well, you can march. Well, when we march, we're not we're not calling on the name. We're not calling on the name of the most high. We're not even mentioning God. We're mentioning the injustices, but we're not mentioning God. And that was their power. That's the power. Right. Okay. That, so that's the game. That's the game. Make sense? Mm-hmm. I want to talk a little about more than that. show some numbers, put it on the screen. You know, 11... Uh, young Ethiopians have died in clashes with police officers since 1997. 20% of youngsters in jail are Ethiopian boys, while the proportion of the population is less than half a percentage point. <laughs> the number of indictments filed against Ethiopian Israeli minors dropped by 8% between 2016 and 2018, but went up by 20% yes. against Ethiopian Israeli adults. Yes. Furthermore, when we talk about education, 62% were entitled to the uh, matriculation certificates uh, in 2017 at least, while in the overall Jewish population, it goes up much higher to 79%. And uh, when it comes to poverty issues, 25% of Ethiopian households live mm. below mm. the poverty mm. line here in Israel. Mm. I wanna to go to uh, mm. Doron uh, and ask you about this because Doron, compared to 
the racism that black Americans see. Oh, uh, there's a connection. Uh, you know, that's rooted in hundreds of years of slavery. What is the root cause for racism? So there is a connection. <laughs> Vocab said there's no connection. Against blacks here in Israel. You're right that it's very different. Uh, the context, the historical context oh, in the United States is, uh, is very different, starting from slavery uh, to nowadays with the with the not just poverty but violence within inner city ghettos and etc. In Israel, it's a relatively new phenomenon where the, this immigration starts uh, mostly from the 80s onwards. I think the the new thing here is the new generation, as far as I understand it, and uh, from the talks that I've uh, had, uh, we see that the younger generation, uh, the and those that led the demonstrations, those that are 15 year old and uh, slightly more, slightly less, they do not um, budge and they do not take in the kind of insults and the t type of treatment that the older generation, I'm talking about generation, we are talking about even six or eight year years older than them, mm. uh, they do not uh, agree with that, to say the least, and they are the ones that took to the streets. Uh, it's a matter of a new generation, a generational difference so, so uh, that are, is uh, that we see so, here in the streets. Yeah, don't, I, 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 so I we had an, because, you know, the, there was an, a generation in Ethiopia, the older generation who acquiesced. Sound familiar. But now there's a new generation who's rising up. Sound familiar. Okay, hallelujah. So it's the same playbook, the same thing. And so our question to our Christian brothers and sisters is, why is this acceptable? What does the white church have to say about this? These are Israelites. These are Jews, right? So the Christian churches will send all of this money and tithes and donations to Jewish synagogues in Israel. They don't have anything to say. Why doesn't Christianity have to say anything about these injustices? These are God's chosen people that go back millennia why doesn't the christian church even mention them why don't they even ever talk about them why is their artwork never shown why are they why why don't they even show their, their artwork and their contributions to 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 the world why is these things why is it tab why is it taboo to be a christian and even talk about this many many of the christians who join in us here for the first time why this is probably your first time even he really hearing it hearing about these things go ahead Ari. Uh, yes, sir. I was just going to say that, you know, they, you know, they have to cling to the lie because if the truth comes out, it ex it exposes everything. Um, and then they, they start to realize like, OK, wait a minute. Um, you know, maybe maybe things aren't always, you know, what we were taught. Uh, we, we know the scripture says our father have inherited lies by acknowledging the people. They, you know, by acknowledging the truth, they have to acknowledge the people. And by acknowledging the people and acknowledging the prophecies of the book, you know, it changes everything. All right. Um, they've been taught that, hey, you know, this is about them. They've been taught that uh, the Messiah is a, you know, white dude, all these things. And they don't want to let go of these fantasies, if that makes any sense. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we see, as it was mentioned in scripture, they take our history and they burn it. And then mm -hmm. they give us a false history in this place. And so the same playbook that they do here on black Americans, they run in the same playbook on the open life that they won't tell us, but not the same people. That's right. And it keeps us, it keeps us enslaved because once, once we start to come back to the law, statutes and commandments, understanding that even America itself was built on the back of what they call black people. Right. Mm -hmm. So once we, come back to the law, statutes, and commandments and start, you know, developing healthy communities again. OK, and start circulating money within our communities. It takes a, right. it takes away from their economy and their power that they have over us. All right. Right. And, you know, at the end of the day, they don't want to they don't want to lose that power. All right. Even yeah. and, and one of the ways we control people is through what they call the religious system or the church system. So, okay, let's go to scripture. Let's see what the word has to say about this. <coughs> so we're in the book of 
Again, this is First Maccabees, the book that the Christian church said that we ought not to read. And we ought not to know anything about this. All right. We're in First Maccabees chapter three. And I think it's was it 48? Yeah. Verse 48. OK, um, let's start a little bit prior to that. All right. OK. So Antiochus gets mad. He's in charge of the uh, Greek government. And because you have a group of Israelites who decide to keep to their heritage, Antiochus decides to make war against them. And there's a major war known as the Maccabean War. But let's start at verse 33. Yes, sir. This is uh, 1 Maccabees chapter 3. We're going to start at verse 33. So he left. Lysias, a nobleman and one of the blood royal to oversee the affairs of the king from the river Parat unto the borders of Mizraim and to bring up his sons Antios until he came again. Moreover, he delivered unto him the half of his forces and the elephants and gave him charge of all things that he would have done as also concerning them that dwelt in Yehuda and Jerusalem. Okay, so win. now because the Israelites are rising up, mm -hmm. Antiochus Epiphany has got to send a big army now to fight against Jerusalem. And now he's sending elephants also, which is like basically saying we're sending in the tanks. So we're not just mm -hmm. riding on horses. Now we're riding on elephants because we need tanks to, to stand up against these black Jews. They're outnumbered, but when their God is with them, they're very powerful. So get mm -hmm. all your heavy equipment and start moving it in. Okay. Mm -hmm. Verse 35. To wit that he should send an army against them to destroy and root out the strength of Israel and the remnant of Jerusalem and to take away their memorial from that place. And that he should place strangers in all their quarters and divide their land by lot. That's the same thing with the fake Jews are doing today. They took strangers, Europeans, moved them into the Holy Land and said, yeah, these are the original Jews. This is where it come from. This is why we're not supposed to read the Apocrypha. Mm. Verse 37. So the king took the half of the forces that remain and departed from Antiochia, Antioch, his royal city, the 147th year, and having passed the river Parat, he went through the high countries. The river you then, mm -hmm. then Lysias chose Talmai, the son of Dorimon, and Nicanor, mightier men, uh, mighty men of the king's friends. And with them he sent 40,000 footmen and 7,000 horsemen to go into the land of Yehuda and to destroy it as the king commanded. Verse 40, so they went forth with all their power and came and pitched by Amaos in the plain country. And the merchants of the country hearing the fame of them took silver and gold very much with servants and came into the camp to buy Hebrew slaves. Same thing they, that he was talking about. So the fake Jews, Mm -hmm. When they knew that the Romans were coming in to make war against Israel, Goldstein, Silverberg, Lieberman, mm -hmm. <laughs> they all got their money together and said, hey, when this war is out, we're going to we're going to take these Hebrews and we're going to turn them into slaves. We're going to buy, sell and trade black people as slaves, black men and women. This is what we're going to do. This is why they don't want us reading these these lost books. OK, it, it, it tells you what the Greeks did. And this is the same playbook that the United States of America, Britain, Germany, and all of them do to this very day. This is why they don't want us reading this, okay? But we're gonna read a little more and finish out. First Maccabees chapter three, starting at verse number 41. And the merchants of the country hearing oh, the- and then, then they label us as anti-Semitic for reading this. For stating that this even happened, this is critical race theory. And this is this is anti-Semitic for reading this history. Verse 41. And the merchants of the country, 
hearing the fame of them, took silver and gold very much with servants and came into the camp to buy Hebrew slaves, a power also of Aram and of the land of the Philistim joined themselves unto them. Now, when Yehuda and his brethren saw that miseries were multiplied and that the forces did encamp themselves in their borders, for they knew how the king had given commandment to destroy the people and utterly abolish them, they said one to another, let us restore the decayed fortune of our people and let us fight for our people and the sanctuary. Then was the congregation gathered together that they might be ready for battle and that they might pray to Yahweh. protest. Pray. That they might pray to Yehoah. That they might march. Pray. That they might pray to Yehoah. Saying we shall overcome. That they that might they pray. pray to Yehoah. Read that again, verse 42. Starting at verse 42. Now, when Yehuda and his brethren saw the miseries were multiplied, and that the forces didn't camp yeah, brother, with those. Brother, 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 if you're gonna read it, you gotta read, you gotta read it. Okay. Now, when Martin Luther King and his brother, <laughs> you gotta read that right, brother. <laughs> <laughs> so now they just they, they didn't they didn't they didn't boycott buses, they didn't do none of that, like they actually fought. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is what Christianity said. They're going to raise up a Martin Luther King like figure mm -hmm. and have him to pacify the people. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's let's finish reading. Sorry, I was just playing with y'all. I'm sorry. <laughs> ah, he was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> just playing, brother. <laughs> sorry. Uh, starting at verse 42. Now, when Yehuda and his brethren saw that miseries were multiplied and that the forces did encamp themselves in their borders, for they knew how the king had given commandment to destroy the people and utterly abolish them. They said one to another, let us restore the decayed fortune of our people and let us fight for our people and the sanctuary. Verse 44, then was the congregation gathered together that they might be ready for battle and that they might pray to Yahuwah and ask mercy and compassion. From their now, enemies. Mm -mm. You, you, the, mm -mm. The, the rest from, of the from their enemies, mm -mm. from Yehovah. Mm, okay, <laughs> that they might pray to Yehovah and ask mercy and compassion. Now Jerusalem lay void as a wilderness; there was none of her children that went in or out. The sanctuary of Yehovah also was trodden down, and aliens kept the stronghold. The heathen had their habitation in that place. And joy was taken from Yaakov, and the pipe with the harp ceased. Wherefore the children of Israel assembled themselves together and came to Matzvah over against Jerusalem. For in Matzvah was the place where they prayed aforetime in Israel. Then they fasted that day and put on sackcloth and cast ashes upon their heads and rent their clothes. That's our power. That's our power. And the Ethiopian Israelites who went into the land have forgotten these things. And they started marching instead. Because their churches are teaching them to do that. This is acceptable. The march movement, that came from the churches telling the people to do that. So when the churches really should say, hey, let's fast and pray, and call on the name of the Most High and cry out to him. Instead, they had us organize and march. But if you were organized to march in the name of Yah and do a fast together while marching, calling on the name of the Most High, how much more significant and powerful would that actually have been? So marching in and of itself is not wrong, but who are you marching to? And what are you marching for? And is God or the Most High Yah at the front of your, of your march? So... Oh, yeah. Dang. Um, Go ahead. Okay. You know, it, it just reminds me um, of in um, uh, Esther when she was, you know, married to the king. That's what she did when Mordecai, um, or when Haman wanted to destroy all the Jews, she knew that they all needed to fast together and pray together so right. that we as the nation would not be wiped out. And somewhere along the line, we forgot that. 
Okay. Excellent. That's time excellent. to bring it back now. Time to bring it back. Hallelujah. That's an excellent point. Excellent precept. Continuing at verse 47. Then they fasted that day and put on sackcloth and cast ashes upon their heads and rent their clothes and laid open the book of the Torah of Yehoah, wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. This is why they don't want us reading the Maccabees. You'll find out that the white people painted everyone white. Moses at this time, David, Solomon, uh, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Judah, uh, Rebecca, uh, Sarah, Raquel, Leah, Zilpah, Bilhah, Miriam, Eve. All of them, they took the Bible and painted them over white in our holy books. And that's exactly what we have today. When we go into the churches, when we go into the stores and see paintings, religious paintings, Bible bookstores, Christian bookstores, this is what you're going to find. When you type in the Google search and you type Jesus, you're going to see all of these white images. This is what the heathen did from the days of old. And this is why um, the white apologists and the Christians don't want us reading these stories. That's why this is not considered canon. And it used to be there's a word for this. It's called iconoclasm. And it used to be years ago when you look this, this word up, the definition of it would specifically tell you that it was about changing the biblical images from dark skinned people to white people. Mm -hmm. If you Google that now, there's been a lot of other things added trying to say it had to deal with the graven images and, um, you know, not worshiping. They've added all kind of stuff. And the thing is, this has only been like, when did we first, when was that about like 2014 maybe? when we, you know, that situation at the mall, because that was back when we were talking about iconoclasm. And, you know, because I think, you know, there's a book about the Russian icons that has pictures and you can't even get that book. Like if you can find it, it's like thousands of dollars. Um, but just to see how in like five, six, seven years, even they've tried to shift the narrative of that word, which is exactly what that scripture is talking about. Right. Mm -hmm. And this is the reason why these books are forbidden by the canonical church, by the, the, the Christian church. And they say, hey, that's not canon, meaning don't read that. And again, when it comes to biblical books that are truly biblical, the only reason why somebody don't want you to read it is because it's going to expose their doctrine. If it's an actual real biblical book that can be verified from antiquity and has Hebraic roots to it. If they don't want you reading it, it's because it exposes the doctrine. Remember that. There are some missing books, quote unquote, that are not authentic. Mm -hmm. You know, like this uh, Nazarene, was that, was it? Uh, I don't know. Um, whatever they use it, but yes, mm -hmm. there's no. Gospel. Mm -hmm. The gospel of the vegetarian cookbook. You know, and, and, and other missing books like that, <laughs> the gospel of broccoli and, you know, <laughs> the broccoli. <laughs> Somebody um, been posted a comment recently. The, the carotites and the broccoliites and, you know, all of that. <laughs> <kind of stuff. laughs> the book of letters, you know, all of that stuff. That's fair. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> <That's a kiss>. yeah. <laughs> Sleep oh. Go ahead. Um, you know, in addition to um, what you're saying about, you know, like the book of Maccabees and how, you know, the Apocrypha exposes them, well, you know, even in the book of Daniel, when, when the king had that statue made, that statue prophesied our captivities and the the kings that will rule in in the world are on the earth in order you know and why is it that you know we understand that the bible is also history of things that have transpired 
But when the statue says that after the Medo-Persians, which was the silver part of the body, then mm -hmm. another kingdom would rise up, which would be the Greeks. Mm -hmm. But where is that at in the Bible? Right. Why can we not find that? It even talks about us being sold to the Grecians, yeah. you know, in the minor prophets. But then it just jumps from that to the book of Matthew. So you never even see the captivity, the Greek captivity anywhere in the Bible, but yet Daniel, you know, talked about these things, prophesied right. these things. Okay. So this is why we have to know our history. Go ahead, Ock. Uh, yes, sir. I just wanted to add, uh, because I, I didn't know were we wrapping up or not. But yeah. I wanted, to, I wanted to add that, um, you know, like you said, they take these books out, um, and, you know, so you don't know the history, um, understanding, like when you explain to them, hey, things weren't supposed to be added or taken away. When mm -hmm. we go to the book of Solomon, right, in uh, chapter 14, starting at verse 15, Solomon gives a detailed description of a, of a, of a man who lost his son, but had pictures painted or made, you know, in an image, right? That's Which, what, go ahead. Yes, excellent. Mm. No, sorry. Go ahead, sir. No, I was saying I know where you're going with it, and I said that's excellent. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just, and and so when you had the pictures up of when you punch in uh, Jesus into the Google, right? For people who haven't heard this before, all right. Um, like the brother uh, Namore, when he opened the study today, he said the Bible warned us of all these things, but when they took this portion out, it makes it so you can't see these things, right? So Cesar Boger, right, which is, you know, what y'all call Jesus Christ, right? But it's just really an image of Cesar Boger. This is spoken of in the Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, starting at verse 15 and, and on, all right? So it gives a warning. So part of the reason to answer the question of the title of the, of the study, you know, why do Christians want to burn these books and things like that? Because they don't want to let go of their idols. So... <laughs> This, this false image of Christ was prophesied to be a major idol, a major idol. And if I don't know if it's OK, if we can read those, um, I can read those scriptures briefly. Go ahead. Yeah. All right. Well, that's um, Wisdom of Solomon uh, for everyone who wants to follow along. And I'm just going to start at verse, uh, Wisdom of Solomon, verse <clears throat> uh, chapter 15. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, starting at verse 15. And it says, for a father afflicted with untimely mourning, when he had made an image of his child, soon took, taken away, now honored him as an Elohim or as a God, which was then a dead man, and delivered to those that were under him ceremonies and sacrifices. Thus, in the process of time, an ungodly custom grown strong was kept as a Torah or a law. Engraven images were worshipped by the commandments of kings. OK, so we know you got the, the the fake Jesus statue over there in one of the, you know, countries and all those things that overlooks the water. So on and so forth. Verse 17, whom men could not honor in presence because they dwelt far off. They took the counterfeit of his visage from far and made an express image of a king whom they honored to the end that by this, their forwardness, they might flatter him that was absent as if he were present. Also, the singular diligence of the artificer did help to set forward the ignorant to more superstition. For he peradventure willing to please one in authority forced all his skill to make the resemblance of the best fashion. And so the multitude, okay, so the multitude of people, allured by the grace of the work, took him now for a God or an Elohim, which a little before was but honored. Why does it say for a little before was but honored? Because before, you know, Sergio Borger, you know what I'm saying, he was known to be uh, a person that I believe he, from my understanding, killed, you know, um, unalived his uh, brother-in-law so he could be with his own sister things like right. that right yeah. it, it continues on it says um verse 21 and this was an occasion to deceive the world okay so christ said many shall come in my name and say i'm in christ and deceive the world and who deceived the world revelations tells us satan 
It goes on, it says, for men serving either calamity or tyranny did ascribe unto stones and stocks the incommunicable name. Moreover, this was not enough for them that they erred in the knowledge of Elohim, whereas they lived in the great war of ignorance. Those so great plagues called they Shalom. All right. So I just want to share that. Dang. Hold on. Oh, yeah. All right, we're going to finish out this part. So let's do 47 again. Mm -hmm. They had to, when they went to open their books as they trying to restore their history, they opened up the, the scriptures inside of the sanctuary and the Greeks painted white images of David mm -hmm. and of Moses and of Samuel and um, Sarah and, and Rebecca, R R Raquel, Leah. They did all of that and whitewashed everything. So this was part of the fight of the Maccabees. They replaced it with Becky and Heather, huh? <laughs> <laughs> they put the Cash Me Outside girl in there, and they put uh, who was it? Kim Kardashian. They put in there. They did all of this stuff and and, and and whitewashed it. The history. So this is again. This is our our contention that we want to present to the Christian believers. Why is this permissible? And why doesn't the white church say anything about this? And why don't they teach these things? <clears throat> this is First Maccabees chapter 3, starting at verse 47. Let's go back to right. verse 47. Then they fasted that day and put on sackcloth and cast ashes upon their heads and rent their clothes and laid open the book of the Torah of Yehoah wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. They brought also the priest garments and the first fruits and the tithes and the Nazarites they stirred up who had accomplished their days. Then cried they with a loud voice to Yahuwah Elohim saying, what shall we do with these and whither shall we carry them away? For thy sanctuary is trodden down and profaned, and thy priests are in heaviness and brought low. And lo, the heathen are assembled together against us to destroy us. What things they imagine against us thou knowest. How shall we be able to stand against them except thou, O Elohim, be our help? Oh, verse 54. Sorry. How shall we be able to stand against them except thou? Oh, oh, Elohim, be Black, our help. Black Lives Matter, be our help. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Elohim. <laughs> oh, Elohim, be our help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Verse 54. Then sounded they with trumpets and cried with a loud voice. And after this, Yehuda ordained captains over the people even captains over thousands and over hundreds and over fifties and over tens. But as for such as were building houses or had betrothed wives or were planting vineyards or were fearful, those he commanded that they should return every man to his own house, according to the Torah of Yehoah. So the camp removed and pitched upon the south side of Amaos. And Yehuda said, arm yourselves and be valiant men, and see that ye be in readiness against the morning, that ye may fight with these heathen that are assembled together against us to destroy us and our sanctuary. For it is better for us to die in battle than to mm -hmm. behold the calamities of our people and our sanctuary. Nevertheless, as the will of Yehoah Elohim, so let right. him do. Hallelujah. 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 So in the next chapter, we see this is the beginning of the Feast of Dedication on Hanukkah because Judah, Maccabees, and their brethren went out against the Greeks heavily outnumbered, and the Most High gave them a severe victory. They destroyed them and beat the Greeks and put them to flight and took back the temple. Hallelujah. And purged the Hallelujah. temple and the sanctuary. And that's why... Hanukkah is known as the Feast of Dedication because after they beat the Greeks and the heathen out of their land and out of the sanctuary, 
they rededicated themselves to the most high and to the sanctuary. So that's what wow. we're trying to do in these last days. We're restoring the body of Mashiach or the body of Christ to its true state and restoring mm -hmm. the people starts with that. And the people repenting and turning back to Yah, worshiping in spirit and in truth. We bless you. Modi Manaknu Laka Adonai Yahuwah Zivaot. We thank you, Yahuwah, Lord of hosts. Adonai Elohei Abraham Yitzchak Yisrael. Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. Ki Natata Lanu. Because you gave to us. Minazayak Al Oivenu. The victory of our enemies. Torah Yahuwah. Thank you, Yahuwah. Ki Hayita Imanu Ko Hazman. Because you were with us all the time. Wa Ata Lo Azav Tanu. You never forsake us. Hallelujah. Hear our prayers, please. And give us of your blessing. In the week to come. Tibarek Otanu. And bless us. Bashalom. With peace. Mayim. Water. Mazon. Food. Begadin. Clothes. Ahava. Love. Tikwa. Hope. Emuna. Faith. Faith. Hanun. And um, grace with Rakun and mercy, but call your pain in all of our dwellings. Tera fe ko hakole bavakusha. Heal all the sick, please. Well, uh, well, hot sale new and um, deliver us and deliver us. The yard ha oi venu from the hand of our enemies. Amen. Well, uh, with tie ear from or um, in enlighten us. Hmm. You say tight ear. Tight ear. And enlighten us. Sh or shine. Shine. Okay. Tight ear. Ha or. Um. Shine the light. Al ha. Goyim. Over the goyim. Over the gentiles. Uh. Let ot otanu. To see you. Let uh to okay king let uh let let har ot to show us. Oh, to show us. Uh huh. Ha emet. The truth. The truth. With Tibarek Amka and um, bless your people. Le daat to know. She anaknu beneka that we are your we sons, are your children, and daughters. Cain. Cain. Bene Yisrael. The sons of Israel. The children of Israel. Cain. Ha anashin with nashin. And men and women. Azikwani with naarin. And elders and young men. Kolanu Amka bene Yisrael. All of your people, Israel. With Tibarek Ko ha. Ha goyim asher me aminim beruach wa emet. And bless all of the Gentiles of our people in spirit and in truth. King, with tibare kola him. And bless all of them. Le leket. To walk. Uh, al uh, ko mitzvot teka. In all of your commandments. With tibare shalom bakoyo shvenu. And bless us with peace in all of our dwellings. With shema tefilatenu. And hear our prayers. Vashem kohanenu. In the name of our uh, priests, Malkenu, King, King. Yahoshua Hamashiach, Yahoshua Hamashiach, Ain Yakid Holy, and uh, Holy Begotten Son. Hallelujah. 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 And thank you for victory, Father, Hallelujah. over the heathen in the past week. And thank you for making your name known. Amongst your people, Yisrael, and allowing us to know that we are the chosen people, oh, Heavenly Father, Hallelujah. and that we are called by your name, and that you are restoring hope, faith, and love back unto your people in these last days and raising us up, Father, from underneath the heel of Esau. We Hallelujah. bless you. Thank you. Glorify you and praise you. In Yahushua's mighty name, we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 All right. Thank you so much, family, for joining us for this awesome study. I know I learned some things today. Hallelujah. Hopefully you learned some things as well and that you will continue to use this as a spearhead to even branch off into your own studies. Yes. Um, if you are looking for books that have some awesome images you need to visit HebrewIsraeliteScriptures.com 
and mm. there you will find a plethora of things to get you started. Yes, let's show them the site because for us, the shop about the is, is over. Down. The site is down. Yes. And we have a special oh, yes. promotion. Uh-huh. All right. Yeah, <laughs> I love this. You're gonna love it. You're gonna <laughs> love hallelujah. It. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, that's all, all right. right. That's all. <laughs> hallelujah. So you can show them what they have to do. All right. Yeah, so you got to show the screen, baby. Let's go to the home page. Oh, okay, we got to show the screen. Yeah, I was gonna try to get it open before. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna pull up the Hebrew Israelite Scriptures dot com website. <laughs> All right. This is the Hebrew Israelite Scriptures dot com website, as you can see. The scroller here showing the library. Okay. All right. So it has got some information. We're going to know about what makes it special. Um, some of our last books that were added to the library. But what we want you to know is that we have a very special offer running right now. And, you know, you know, special offers are time limited, so don't wait. Y'all see that right there, code right there? That is the end of season sale. Discount code vocab Malone. Yes. And get 15% off <laughs> of any of your purchases. Yeah. Yeah, if you could yeah, click on I said it to go to the store. So yes, so this is our sale. 15% off. This is the code. Vocab Malone. Let's give Vocab Malone a hand. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. For helping the people to learn their language. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 So you get this 15% off of Hallelujah. any Hallelujah. item you choose to purchase right now. Hallelujah. Yes, 15% off of anything in the Hebrew Israelite Scriptures Library. With coupon code Vocab, Vocab Malone. Malone in all caps. Yes. Yes. All caps. Show and if for some reason if you have any problems, make sure you just send us an email, Kaisha at gmail.com, and we will help you out in getting that done. Or also support at HebrewWestScriptures.com. Yes. So this is the Vocab Malone sale. 15%. 15% off of anything. For the Israelite library made for our people by our people. <laughs> so, hallelujah. So please check us out. Uh, we have a lot of information, missing books. We got Enoch in Hebrew and English. We got the Lost Acts of the Holy Apostles. We have the gold edition, the silver edition. What's the blue edition with the, the 66 plus books? Edition. The plus, plus edition plus. with the 66 books. We have the Apocrypha, the Express Edition. The, the, uh, Concordance and name the book. The concordance and name book. And we have the gold edition in paperback as well. Soft and paperback. Cover. Yes. yes. Now we have the paperback editions of these books. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So please check us out. HebrewsLifeScriptures.com. Get yours today and put in vocab Malone and save 15%. All praises to the most high. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Oh man, praise Yah! What the adversary and the enemy means for evil, the Most High turns good. So blessed be the Most High Yah. Get your vocab alone special, fifteen percent off today, and this special is for a limited time only. So make sure you do that after the Shabbat in your location. Hallelujah! Yes, we have an apocryphal hardcover and softcover. So family, uh, did y'all want to say anything before we sign out of here? I was just going to tell everyone, um, you know, um, a lot of great information today. Make sure you hit the like button. Uh, yeah. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. Just go ahead and hit it. Um, it's, and, and just as you've learned today, um, by hitting the like button, it allows the content to go out to other brothers and sisters who uh, subscribe to the channel and they may not have gotten the original notification. So uh, make sure you hit the like button um, as you go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Bless you, and we thank the Most High for you all. We're hoping you have a wonderful, fantastic week 
full of prosperity, health, restoration, joy, and shalom that none can take from you. Okay. So may uh, your week as well as ours be filled with the grace of the Most High. Till uh, next time, we, y'all willing, we'll be seeing y'all probably on tomorrow or Monday. Y'all willing um, with another installment uh, for the people so that they can continue to get prepared for the return of our Messiah. May y'all bless you and keep you. We'll see you next time. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.